Okay, welcome back, everybody. Thank you all. Have a seat. Thank you all for bearing with us. Welcome back. Um, we appreciate your patience. Again, if you can't hear something or didn't hear somebody, you please tell me. If you can't see something, please tell me. I'll move you around or speak up where you all are able to hear us. So we appreciate your patience. And if you run out of paper and your pads or anything, please let us know. Uh, we'll get you some more, okay? Effective winds are under the same oath that we administered to you yesterday. Yes, okay. Get back. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Detective. So we left off yesterday. We were going to discuss uh, the, map, the photograph, the aerial photograph that's now in evidence at States Exhibit 8. And so with the court's permission, I'd ask if you step, step down. Yes, sir. Watch your step. try to do is stand to the side of the photograph so that when we're talking about it the jurors can see it okay yes all right so first tell us just basically what area we're looking at here this is the northern portion of Silver Lake Estates that this would be south the top would be north this would be west US 1 would be to the east now when you use the term Silver Lake Estates does this photograph encompass the entire Silver Lakes Estate area? Uh, no, it does not. Where would Silver Lakes go? North, south, east, west, how, how, where would it go? Uh, it would extend to the south down to Wagner Place. Okay. And this Silver Lakes Estate, it appears to have, I guess, would, would this be part of it here to the east of US-1 or no? No, sir. And to the, did I say, the, yeah, east of US-1 and west of Oleander, would this be part of it? No, sir. Okay, so are we talking about a predominantly residential area? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And it relates to the, the, the racial composition. All mixtures live in this resident in this area? That's correct. African Americans? Yes. Uh, Hispanic? Yes. Caucasians? Yes. During the course of this investigation, many people spoken with, is that correct? That's correct. And again, an opportunity to in interview all different sorts of people that live in Silver Lakes Estates. That is correct. Okay. Now, what we know um, from the dispatch tape that the ladies and gentlemen jury got to hear uh, before we broke last night is that Sergeant Morales called out a 10 code. And again, for the record, that was what? 1050. Meeting? Conducting a traffic stop. All right. And that his number was what? 166. All right. Now, if you can, for the benefit of the jury, would you tell us, he also indicated a, a, a location. Yeah, he anticipated the stop would occur. Is that correct? That's correct. Will you show the ladies and gentlemen of the jury on this photograph, States Exhibit um, 8, where it was that he had indicated that he anticipated this traffic stop of the defendant's vehicle would be made? Uh, right here in the area. Stop. The dynamic nature of a traffic stop is some of it is kind of guessing where I'm going to be. That's correct. Did, there, did the traffic stop, was there a subsequent communication that would logically lead one to believe the traffic stop did not happen there where he had called it out. Yes, there was. Okay. We hear some type of, I don't know if it's a, a lack of communication or maybe a misunderstanding. The dispatcher asked Sergeant Morales a question, correct? That's correct. And what was that? Uh, your location. Okay. So she wanted to clarify? Yes. And what did he call it out as? At he, that, the second time? He called it out as Mira and King Orange. Show the jury where that would be. Right here. Okay. So we have a significant, again, Understanding procedures and policies as it relates to stop, he's anticipating the location in which the suspect will stop. That's correct. All right. Now, we know, obviously, at some point in time, shortly after Sergeant Morales calls out, you know, that's what he's running, um, that Sergeant, or Detective, now Detective Bennett, indicates shots fired. Is that correct? That is correct. What street is that that they referenced? Uh, with the, first of all, the last radio communication we hear from Sergeant Morales, what street was that on, or were they heading to? It was right here at King Orange and Naylor. Okay. And again, uh, you had an opportunity to go out to the scene, is that correct? That is correct. All right. I want to hand you this little stick pen, and it's got a little red car on it, and I'd like you to place this approximately, to the best of your ability, utilizing this photograph, where the shooting occurred. You know what I did? 
get, I give you the wrong one, I give you the red car. I knew I was going to mess this up. Daryl told me I'd mess it up. I mean, I wanted to give you Sergeant Morales' car because we're going to use this one next. So, again, just put, place that where the shooting occurred. That white little police car indicating Sergeant Morales' vehicle. Okay. And then we hear during the course of the radio communications that there is a chase and, and other witnesses will testify to that. But utilizing this little red car can you indicate where the chase was terminated and where the defendant was taken into custody. And then finally, during the course of your investigation, and we'll get into this uh, to, in, in, in considerably more detail, but you did investigation into the, the defendant, his background, where he lived, things of that nature? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Can you, dem can you indicate on this map, States Exhibit A, where the defendant was residing the day of Sergeant Morales' murder? Right here. Okay. And what I'd like you to do is take this little red house and stick it where the defendant was residing on the day of his arrest and the day of the murder. Okay. And so again now as we look at this map, his house would have been on the what end of Mira Drive? On the south end of Mira Drive at King Orange. Okay. So at the corner of King Orange and Mira, right? That's correct. The last place where Sergeant Reynolds called out to stop, a stop was going to occur. That's correct. You can take your seat. Thank you. All right. We talked yesterday. You indicated that the defendant who you've identified here in court was the individual who was arrested February 28, 2013 for the murder of Sergeant Gary Morales, correct? That is correct. All right. Can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury how tall the defendant is? Uh, six foot two. Okay. And his appearance here today, is there anything different about his appearance here in court today versus how he appeared on the date of his arrest? Yes. And wh wh how does he appear differently? Uh, he cut his hair. Okay. Did you have contact yourself with the defendant on the day of his arrest, February 28th? Yes, I did. And were, again, as I had indicated to you yesterday, or asked you yesterday, photographs taken of his appearance and his physical condition uh, at the, as he appeared at, after his arrest, subsequent to his arrest? Yes, they were. All right. And, Your Honor, if I could, uh, I'd like to uh, put the photographs up on the screen and have the deputy, the detective, step back. Sir. They were admitted yesterday? Yes, sir, they were. They'll just for the record, identify which ones you're displaying to the jury as you yeah, display. Each time I put a photograph up, I'll identify the number you're on. So you want him to step down? I would. Thank you. Okay. The first photograph we're looking at is... Can somebody get the lights? Thank you. Thank you. The first photograph of the record we're looking at is State's Exhibit 2. Do you recognize that? Yes, sir. Okay, and again, is that truly and accurately to pick the defendant as he appeared on the date of his arrest? That's correct. Okay. We see some mud, grass, dirt type stains on the front of his shirt. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. State's Exhibit 4, a little bit closer up of that. Is that consistent with the grass stains and dirt he got at the time of his arrest? That is correct. And, and we're going to see this later, but is there actually a video that depicts essentially his apprehension? Yes, there is. All right. That's State's Exhibit 3, and then two side profiles, State's Exhibit 4. Again, does this de demonstrate yes, different Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir.
So again, detective, for the record, we're looking at State's Exhibit 4. Again, now, you, this is a side view, which gives us a better perspective. To the extent you can get a perspective of height from a picture of height. And does it also reflect his hair from the side? Yes, it does. Okay. And the clothing he was wearing at the time of the killing? That is correct. And finally, State's Exhibit 5, just another photograph, again, this time from the left, a, a profile from the left side. Is that correct? That is correct. And again, does that truly and accurately depict how the defendant appeared at the time of his arrest in this case? Yes, it does. All right. Now, um, you have testified and utilized State's Exhibit 8, and we've heard in the dispatch tape of a car chase. Um, we know the defendant was arrested. Was his car ultimately seized, or I should say the vehicle in which he was driving? Yes, it was. All right. I'm going to show you what's in evidence of State's Exhibit 6. Do you recognize this? Yes, I do. Okay, and please tell us what we're looking at here. This is a red Toyota Corolla. And this is actually positioned after the uh, pit maneuver was done. We're at point of rest. Okay, so after the pit maneuver, and it's obviously damaged, as you can see, to the vehicle, but after the pit maneuver, the car came to rest in this location? That's correct. Right. And from the back, State's Exhibit uh, 7, what are we looking at here? The back of the vehicle with the Florida license tag. Okay. And we also heard a license tag being called out associated with a red Toyota Corolla on the dispatch tape. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to go take you to State's Exhibit 9. And this is just kind of, can you describe what the difference between States 9 and States 8 is for the jury so that they understand what we're doing here? That's basically the same aerial photograph of the northern end of Silver Lake Estates. Again, King Horns Drive, the bottom would be south, the top would be north. That side over here would be east, and this side would be west. Okay, so it's just kind of a little bit closer in, if you will? That's correct. All right. Now, I neglected to ask this, and I want to get this out of the way. Subsequent to the defendant's arrest in this case, did you obtain a court order to uh, to secure samples of his DNA? Yes, I did. All right. And did you get? Did you in fact obtain those samples? Yes, I did. Can you tell the jury how you do that? Uh, we take a uh, sterile oral swab, which is basically a sterile Q-tip, and wearing rubber gloves, take the Q-tip and stick it inside the mouth, in between the cheek and gum, and rub it up and down pretty vigorously. And then we take it, stick it back in the sterile packaging, and pack it. Okay. And, of course, you, you use the term sterile, and you use gloves and so forth. And what's the purpose of all of that? Is that how you're trained to collect the samples to preserve their integrity? Yes, it is, so that there's no cross-contamination. All right. Now, your agency itself does not conduct DNA testing. Is that right? That is correct. So once you secure the sample and you seal it, what do you, what's done with it? Uh, we place it into evidence, and then it's taken to the crime lab. Okay. I want to show you states exhibits 10 and 11. And I'll ask you if you just if you recognize these items. Yes, I do. Okay, and how do you recognize them? This is my handwriting. Okay. And can you tell, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, first of all, you indicated you, you remember the date upon which you collected these samples? Uh, not right off the top of my head. Okay. Obviously, it's subsequent to the defendant's arrest. That is correct. Okay. And once you collected them, you put them in these envelopes, secured them, and put them into evidence? That is correct. All right. And can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury from whom you collected the samples contained in that state's exhibits 10 and 11? Uh, the defendant, Aris Tinsley. All right. Your Honor, at this time, we'd offer in evidence state's exhibits 10 and state's exhibit 11. Any objection or order from the defense? Um, should be admitted to states 10 and 11 in evidence. Okay, so let's move then back to uh, states exhibit 9, which you've identified as kind of a closer up photograph of the, I guess, the relevant areas associated with the killing of Jerry Morales, correct? That is correct. During your investigation in this case, did you conduct a background investigation into the defendant's background, as, as I'd asked you earlier. Yes, sir. All right. As a result of that investigation, were you able to ascertain or determine the status of his driving privileges 
On February 28, 2013, the day of Sergeant Morales' killing. Yes, I was. His driver's and, license. Oh, go ahead. His driver's license was suspended. Okay. And were you able to determine how long, what, when it was suspended, what year? Uh, it had been suspended, I, I don't recall right off the top of my head. Okay. I don't but want to state it. Several years prior to this incident, correct? That, that is correct. Okay. Did you also investigate um, the defendant's criminal history to determine if he had ever previously been arrested for driving on a suspended license? Yes. And did you find that, in fact, he had been and on an occasion had had his car searched as a result of such an arrest? That is correct. Okay. And finally, did you investigate the defendant's background to determine whether or not he had ever previously been convicted of a felony? Yes, I did. And did you determine that he was, in fact, a convicted felon February 28, 2013, the day of the killing of Gary Morales? Yes, I did. The state of Florida, are you allowed to possess a firearm if you're a convicted felon? No, sir. All right. Now, back to the morning of Sergeant Morales' killing. Um, at some point in time, did you actually respond to the scene of the, of the shooting out there at Naylor? Yes, I did. All right. Now, that would be something you would normally do as a, a lead detective in a case? That is correct. Why? Uh, because you want to get an overall visual uh, for yourself of the scene and what you're actually investigating. Does that also assist you in issuing directives and other people as to what you might want done? Absolutely. All right. So what I'd like to do is show some photographs, and we started off here with nine. And it should be pretty evident to everybody I kind of jumped the gun here a little bit. But show us on this photograph approximately where the shooting uh, occurred. So for the record, that's, there, there appears to be some type of, and we see it on State's Exhibit 8 as well, but is there, what is this here in this area that I'm circling next to your arrow? That is an empty lot. Okay. But, and that appears to be the only empty lots on Naylor, at least on the east side of Naylor? That is correct. All right. I'm going to go show you State's Exhibit 13. What are we looking at here in States Exhibit 13? And this photograph, the bottom would be north, the top would be south, this side would be west, this side would be east. Okay. This is Sergeant Morales' patrol car. This is Deputy Bennett patrol car. This truck was in place at the time. This vehicle is Lieutenant Dietrich, who we arrived after the fact. Detective Wilson. Just because what the ladies that are record or transcribing are doing is all you're saying is a car and we don't can you describe the color of it and where it's located in the picture so there's a record? Yes. Yes. Okay. This vehicle it, over on the side behind the patrol cars is a red Ford truck. Okay. Then behind it, off to the other side to the east, is a white Ford Crown Victoria. And that's along whose car? Lieutenant Dietrich. Alright. There is a red Jeep Cherokee belong to Detective Brett Wilkes. Okay, so again, those two cars, Dietrich and Wilkes cars, are obviously late to the scene or they arrived on scene after the sh killing, correct? Correct. All right. This uh, blue Crown Victoria belonged to Officer Keith Holmes with Fort Pierce Police Department, who also arrived afterwards. All right. And, and what about this little gold car up here? That belonged to Detective Angela Flowers, who also arrived afterwards. I'd like to just blow up a segment of this, and again, we'll go through this in more detail crime scene, but we can see down, actually this is going to be, what, this will be the north, I always get it confused, this is north or south on Naylor? The bottom of the photograph would be north. Okay, so this would be southern part of the picture. What are we looking at down here, these little yellow markings? Uh, those are crime scene markers for detect, uh, Deputy Bennett shell cases. Okay, so those would d demonstrate the location of those shell cases. That's from the scene. All right. I think I have states, uh, states 14, orient us again, and then I think it's a little bit better picture. But which way are we looking in this photograph? The top of the photograph in this photograph will be north, and the okay. bottom will be south. All right. And again, what are we looking at here? Uh, we're looking at, at Officer Keith Holmes' car. We're looking at the uh, crime scene markers for Deputy Bennett shell cases. Okay. State 16, what is that a photograph of? 
This photograph, to, to orient you, where the red Jeep is would be north, to that side of the photograph would be south, and this side would be east. Uh, that is a photograph with uh, Detective Wilkes' red Jeep, uh, Officer Holmes' is Crown Vic, dark colored Crown Vic, and the crime scene marker for the shell cases of empty bags. Okay, and there are how many there? Five. All right, and for the record, I misspoke. That state's exhibit 15. And the next is state 16. Again, orient us, tell us what we're looking at. Uh, the top of the photograph will be to the north, the bottom will be to the south. We're looking at the back of the red Ford truck that's parked on the side of the road next to the wooded lot. And then you can see Deputy Bennett's patrol car on the uh, west side of the road. Okay. And again, the red pickup truck was in that location during this incident? Yes, it was. All right. And I asked you earlier about the vacant lot. Is this, would this photograph depict that? Yes, it was. Next is State's Exhibit 17. Go ahead and orient us where, what we're looking at and which direction. The bottom of the photograph is south, the top of the photograph is north. This would be indicate the a portion of the red truck. Deputy Bennett's patrol car on the right. Uh, Sergeant Morales' patrol car on the left. And then the crime scene markers next to Sergeant Morales' patrol car. Same type of markers used that we saw back with respect to Sergeant Detective Bennett's shell casing. That is correct. State 18, just again, what is this a photograph of? Uh, this is a photograph for you to orient you. The photographer on the button would be at the bottom of the screen would be to the west. The photograph is facing east, so the top would be to the east. This is of the back end of Deputy Bennett's patrol car, the wooded lot, and the red Ford truck. And that states 19. This is just a closer up of uh, the top would be north, bottom would be south of Sergeant Morales' patrol car and Deputy Bennett's patrol car with the crime scene markers for the others. Now, just taking this photograph in for a moment, as we look at Sergeant Morales' car, just based on observation, what's wrong with the way it's parked, if you will? Uh, it, it's parked, canted, so that the front is more towards the center of the road, the back is more towards the west side of the road. Okay. Um, of course, the driver's door is open. The passenger door is open, but uh, from what I understand, it was not open at the time. Given the direction the vehicle pointing in the north, is it on the correct side of the road? Uh, no, it is not. Okay. All right, and then the last picture I'd like to show, states exhibit 20. What are we looking at here? Uh, the, the top of the photograph will be facing east. The bottom will be west. This is the uh, back end and the side view of Sergeant Morales' patrol car. Got the Bennett's patrol car off to the east side and then the crime scene markers mark the evidence. Okay. So the physical evidence collected from this location here is collected not by you, is that correct? That is correct. Who is that collected by? Uh, crime scene investigator Richard Young. Okay, and we're going to get into details, but were you there on scene when they were processing this? Uh, at the beginning, yes. And can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what are some of the items that are depicted by these markers here? Uh, shell casings, 45 caliber shell casings, uh, this black item here next to marker number 10 is Sergeant Morales' department-issued cell phone. Okay, thank you. You can take your seat. Um, at this time, I have no further questions for Detective Wentz, although he is subject to being recalled. Sir? Okay. Mr. Glenn? Okay. Thank you, officer. You can step down. Could just leave a number where they can reach you if they need you. Thanks. Watch your step. Go I'll call your next witness, please. Yes, sir. Your Honor. At this time, the state of Florida would call Kevin Dietrich to the stand.
Thank you for bearing with us. If you'll come right up here, sir, she'll place you under oath. Watch the wires there. Do you swear upon the evidence you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Good afternoon. Morning. Please introduce yourself to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Uh, Lieutenant Kevin Dietrich, St. Louis County Sheriff's Office. And Lieutenant Dietrich, can you kind of give us a little bit of background information about yourself? How long have you been with the St. Louis County Sheriff's Office? Um, 25 years I've been in law enforcement for a total of 30. And prior to coming to the Sheriff's Office, where did you do your other five years? Uh, Department of Corrections, Dade County. Um, during your tenure with the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office, what kind of positions have you held over those 25 years? Uh, I started on road patrol uh, for four years. I then went into traffic for about four years. Uh, I did special investigations, which were uh, narcotic street level stuff for about a year. Did criminal investigations as a detective. Uh, I was promoted to sergeant, went back to patrol. Uh, and then I did a, about two years as a traffic sergeant, and I was promoted to lieutenant, uh, where I went back to patrol operations. Um, and then I was assigned to the school uh, resource program for about five, six years as a supervisor over the schools. Uh, then I did a stint in the courthouse, supervising the courthouse for about a year and a half. And then I went back to patrol um, for a couple of years, and I'm currently assigned to uh, road patrol support units. What's okay. left? <laughs> Retirement, sir. Okay. All right. I want to take you, well, today and back to 2013. Do you hold today the same position you held back in 2013? Yes, I'm a lieutenant. I'm considered a, uh, a like a watch commander for patrol operations. And Detective Wentz kind of gave us a description of the hierarchy of the agency. So as a lieutenant, you would be above sergeants. Is that right? Yes, they report to me. Can you tell us kind of what your duties or responsibilities are on any given day? Um, kind of an oversight of the different pr programs that the uh, sergeants are overseeing. The, uh, the zone deputies as a road patrol watch commander. The zone deputies go out and take emergency calls for service. They do proactive work through the neighborhoods, um, school zones, issues, uh, random patrol. We identify, I identify issues that may need to be addressed in the community or paperwork flow that the uh, staff are doing just to make sure that the sergeants are making sure that they manage the deputies and I ultimately manage them. Okay. So you talk about in some capacity you keep yourself familiar with patterns of uh, whether it be criminal activity, minor, major, whatever the case might be throughout the, the county, is that correct? Correct. We've got a, uh, a daily reports that come in and briefings that are done on a daily basis kind of give us idea what's going on in the community that we serve whether um, there are minor crimes or traffic complaints. So I monitor that, and uh, I try to give focus to the staff in regards to where there may be issues. Okay. So, you know, like if I were to make an analogy, if you will, um, if you're looking how to allocate your resources, you're not likely to send a whole bunch of deputies and a sergeant out way out west of town out in the boondocks. Right. We're going to manage our resources to... Uh, make sure we're uh, using those resources best for the community. All right. Now, this, these are the same type of activities that you engaged in professionally, obviously, uh, back in February of 2013? Yes, sir. How many, what type of, sh what, what shift were you working February 28th of 2013? We were working an eight and a half hour day shift. Uh, we were assigned to uh, the day shift at that for that week, uh, we came in at 6.30, and we'd get off at 3 o'clock. You use the term we. What is that? Who is we? We is my squad. I was assigned to squad C. Okay. And can you tell me, I don't need you to name everybody in squad C, but how many sergeants did you have under you in squad C? There are normally two sergeants assigned, a north end sergeant, a south end sergeant, and uh, anywhere from 18 to 20 deputies. Okay. And on February 28, 2013, was Sergeant Gary Morales somebody who was assigned to your squad? He was. He was assigned to the south end of the county. So you had direct supervisory authority over Sergeant Morales, is that correct? Yes, sir. On February 28th of 2013, so you had direct supervisory authority over Sergeant Morales, is that correct? Yes, sir. On February 28th of 2013, do you know approximately how many deputies Sergeant Morales had working underneath him? 
Um, been nine or ten of them. Okay. Now, I want to go back to what we talked about just a minute ago. As a result of your monitoring activities in the county, did you, did you identify some minor issues and concerns we had or you had in law enforcement with a particular area within the county? Yeah, I had uh, been seeing just some minor trends um, in the Silver Lake Estates area. Um, and I had met with him the day prior and said, hey, listen, if you get a chance, um, do some enhanced uh, uh, traffic uh, patrols in that Silver Lake Estate area. So you talk about some minor trends. What, are we, what kind of minor crimes are we talking about? There was, there was on a daily basis we get it. So it's not, sometimes it's not cumulative. You just kind of watch the pattern on the daily reports. And I'd seen a burglar or two come in and a couple of thefts and just some minor crimes, criminal mischief, something that... W w there, we'll go weeks sometimes and not see a pattern, and in this case, there was... The criminal misses of what kind of we all call, people out in the real world call vandalism, right? Vandalism. Okay. And so as a result of this trend that you observed in this particular neighborhood in the community you're supposed to watch over, did you develop a plan with Sergeant Morales? I'd actually, uh, I was pleasantly surprised with uh, Gary, or Sergeant Morales, that he took that initiative uh, um, to move forward fairly quickly. Uh, I spoke with him the day before, didn't give much thought to it, um, and then the next morning he called me shortly after 9 o'clock and told me that he had... Uh, okay. That's fine. Yes, sir. Don't, don't tell us anything that Sergeant Morales told you, but ultimately, at the result of your meeting, did he have additional deputies with him or assigned to his... I don't know what you call it, patrol or supervision that day? Right. He had put a uh, group of deputies together to go into that area. Okay. And you talk about, I think you called it proactive or something of that nature. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Are you going into this community? First of all, would you agree that that's a diverse community racially? Yes, sir, it is. Okay. And are you going into that community looking for anybody in particular? No, there was no suspect information or any information that, on any individual. And when a lot of cops show up in a particular area, does that usually kind of deter bad guys from coming in? Yes, sir. Okay, so presence is also something? Yes, it is. It, All right. uh, and how does a proact? what are you trying to accomplish with a proactive patrol approach? What are you looking to accomplish? One, we want the community to understand that we have their same concerns and that we're there to support them. Um, with the numbers. We're looking for people that may have witnessed the, the crime or suspicious people that we could build up relationships with. We might be able to identify a potential suspect, whether they're driving a car or walking. Um, so there's many aspects. We're looking at uh, the totality of the uh, information coming in to be able to gather data. So if somebody's just kind of walking down the road, could a cop pull up and say, hey, how are you doing, and just engage them in conversation? We encourage them to do that, yes, sir. First of all, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? Not at all. And in terms of traffic enforcement, um, are in these types of situations, are you going to make stops where maybe on other occasions you might not stop for a minor violation because you're trying to make your presence known? That could be. All right. And again... February 28, 2013, I, I, I think you answered it, but I want to make sure. Approximately how many deputies did Sergeant Morales have working with him in the Silver Lakes area? There were five. There was uh, one two-man unit, four cars and two-man unit. Okay. So five plus him? Five plus him. All right. Thank you, sir. Judge, I have no further questions at this time. He will be recalled, though. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Glenn, do you wish to question? I don't have any questions. Thank you, sir, very much. You can step down if you just leave a number where they can reach you if they need you. We'll call your next witness, please. Yes, sir. The state calls Casey Fidenic. Fidenic. Good. Before we start, I need to have the other opposing part down to get done.
Court, ma'am. Thanks for bearing with us. You can come on up through the gate there. Just watch your step over the wires. You'll come right up here, ma'am. She'll place you under oath. Thanks, ma'am. You affirm that evidence you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, thank you. Step up to your left there. Watch your step, please. Morning. Good morning. Please introduce yourself to the members of the jury. I'm Casey Fedenick. And if you could uh, spell your last name for us. It's F as in Frank, E-D-Y-N-I-K. And uh, how old are you, ma'am? I'm 20. On, uh, well, where do you live? I live in Michigan. And uh, how long have you lived in Michigan? My whole life. On February 28, 2013, uh, where were you? I was here in Fort Pierce visiting my uncle. Um, I was staying with him for about a month and a half. And where uh, where did your uncle have a place in Fort Pierce? Uh, it was off uh, Mira Drive. <clears throat> and that morning of February 28, 2013, uh, were you doing anything in particular that morning? Yes, I was outside cleaning my uncle's van, trying to make a little bit of money to get a uh, plane kit plane ticket home. Um, I was trying to go back to Michigan to be with my family. On, uh, on that day, who all was staying uh, there at the, at the house on Mira? It was myself, my aunt, my uncle, and my other uncle. And that was who was there. <laughs> okay. Um, so your aunt's name is? Oh, it's Connie Polarski. And uh, her husband, your uncle? Jerry Polarski. And uh, the person whose house it was? My Uncle Tony. And was there someone else visiting the house that day as well? Yes, Albert Kroniak. All right. And is Albert, how is Albert related to you? He is actually my Uncle Jerry, Jerry Plarski. That is my actual uncle, and that's his cousin. But I just call him my Uncle Albert. And uh, all those people you've named, you've known your whole life? Um, basically, other than Albert, I j had just met Albert when I came down for the visit. Now, um, whose van was it that you were cleaning? It was Albert's van. And he was going to give you a few bucks for doing that? Yep. Next to you there, and I, I hopefully there's room, room for you to get out around it, we have... Uh, Actually, with the court's permission, uh, if I could move States 8 closer to the jury and have her step down. I'll just make sure you keep your voice up, ma'am, so we can get you on the record, okay? Oh, sure. You want to step up wherever you, wherever you need to be? No, no, I don't. I'm not. I've been just all. setting it down to keep from tipping over. Um, just about my coming from Scotland. Um, is it possible that the box people put it over, close to the water, or the room, so that I can be able to file what Mr. Federal is pointing to? You want to move over here? Well, I'm going to I can't file it. Oh, okay. All right, why don't you put it over there to her right? Okay. Um, all right, we'll get here in the walkway, kind of. All right. Yeah. Man, if you want to step down, just watch your step come around. Step down and come around the back. Either way. Exhibit 8, please. All right, ma'am. Do you recognize uh, State's Exhibit 8 as, a, as an aerial view of, of the neighborhood? Yeah. Okay. And if you could, please point to the... Uh, place where uh, you were staying that day. Yeah. Ma'am, ma let me have you speak up. Yeah. She's had, she hadn't really said anything yet. Okay. Um, go ahead and uh, tell the folks what's your point now. This is the, my uncle Tony's house. All right. And um, you were said you were working uh, on the van. Where was the van parked? Right at the end of the driveway. Okay. So I'm going to hand you, and we'll check to make sure here. Pink has your name on it on the uh, key there, is that right? Yes. All right, so if you could put your 
uh, push pin in there right where you were standing. Okay, great. And yeah, you, can, you can probably fit through there. I didn't do such a good job. Go around and uh, have a seat. And you said that you said that you were working on the van there at the uh, at the end of the driveway. Yes. How was the van parked? And the front of the van was facing the house, so the back of the van, where the hatch would be, was facing the road. And I noticed that you put the push pin right on the edge of the road. Is that where you were standing? Yes. How far would you say the back of the van was from the edge of the roadway? I was standing right behind the van. If I would have taken one step back or two, I would have been in the road. Now, what kind of cleaning were you doing to the van? I was vacuuming it out and I was wiping down like the interior. Did something happen out on the street that got your attention? Yes. What were you doing when, when your, your attention was called away from the cleaning? I was leaning down vacuuming out the back hatch of the van and I looked up. I could hear a car coming fast so I lifted my head and I looked to the right. I could see a red four-door car coming down the road at a pretty high speed. Um, I'm not sure of the like exact speed limit that's in there, but I know it is a residential area. They're small kids, so. But I knew it was he was definitely going well over the speed limit. Where was it coming from? It was coming north, coming off of Canner, turning left onto Mira Drive. Canner left on the mirror. Heading south. And did you, just, once you looked up and saw where this revving, you know, car sound was coming from, what, did, what else did you see? I watched the car go by me. I looked inside the vehicle. It was a black male, dreadlocks, wearing a white shirt. Did you see any other vehicles? I seen a sheriff's, um, a St. or St. Lucie County or Fort Pierce police car right behind him. How? Uh, when did? Where was the police car in relation to the red car when you saw them? Less than one car length behind him. And when you said you saw the the red car turn from Canner onto Mira, what? Did you see the police car at that time as well? Yes, I did. And did the Describe for us, if you can, what you noticed about the police car. The police car had his lights on, um, seemed to be obviously pulling the car over. The car was not stopping. And you said you watched the car go past you with the police car behind it? Yes. And how far did it, well, did you ever see the red car stop? No, sir. As it went past you, where, where did it go? It went south to King Orange. And did you keep your eyes on it the whole way? I looked down, for, yes, I kept, I, sorry, I'm getting mixed up. I watched it go all the way down the road. Okay. <laughs> so yes, I did. And when you said it got to King Orange, what happened? It ran through the stop sign and took a right onto King Orange. Okay, I'll show you. Um, photograph here. States Exhibit 6. Do you rec This is in evidence. Do you recognize uh, the car pictured in State 6? Yes, I do. Okay. And is that the red car? That is the red car. Had you seen that car before? Yes. Where had you seen that car? He was, that, that car I had previously seen, not on a daily basis, but quite often a couple houses down from my Uncle Tony's house. Now when you said you saw the red car get down to King Orange, what did it do? It went around, it 
went around the corner to the right, took a right onto King Orange. Did it stop for the stop sign? No. You said the officer was, uh, the deputy, Sergeant Morales, was about car length behind? Yes. What happened, uh, what did Sergeant Morales do when he got to the uh, end of uh, Mira at King Orange? Briefly tapped his brake lights and followed right behind him. Then what did you see? The cop car had stopped right on the corner of King Orange and Mira. He went right around the corner and stopped. I had a full visual of the cop's car. So you could see the entire side of his car? Yes. All right. What happened next? I looked down for a brief second, two seconds, three seconds, and I looked back up and the car was gone. Did you see the car pull away? When I say the car, I'm sorry, which car was gone, the police car? The police car was gone. Did you ever see the red car stop? No, I did not. Um, you looked down for a few seconds, you said, and when you looked up, what did you see? The police car taking off. And when you say taking off, what do you mean? Using a high speed, taking off like he's going after something. Definitely wasn't like a slow taking off. Did you, uh, did you see, um, did you ever see Sergeant Morales or, or the officer in the, in the police car get out of his car? No, I did not. Did you ever hear any, any uh, speaking, any words at all, either someone yelling out of their car or any kind of yelling uh, during this whole time we just described to the jury? No, I did not. What happened next? I continued what I was doing, and then 45, it was around 45 seconds later, I heard two gunshots. What did you do when you heard shots? My first instinct was to get down. I obviously didn't know where they were coming from, and then I stood back up and ran inside. When you got inside, who did you say? My Uncle Tony. What did you do then? We were standing in kind of in his kitchen. He has a patio that goes off to the right. Um, we were standing there for just, I ran inside, seen him, we were standing there, and then I heard two more gunshots. What happened next? We ran outside to the backyard. Why would you go out to the backyard? Because my uncles, Jerry Polarski and Albert Kroniak, were back there mowing the lawn. When you got back there, were you able to see back into where the area they were mowing? Yes. Okay. What's in between you and where your uncles were? There was a fence. Uh, and is it the sort of fence you could see through or did you have to look over it? Um, you had to look over it for part of it. When you, uh, what could you see looking over the fence when you got into the back? I could see my uncle, Jerry Polarski, with his hands up. I could only see from his chin up and I could see his hands up. have um, maybe easier to do this with the screen with states exhibit nine if I could have the witness step down please you just watch your step stepping down okay. <clears throat> Exhibit 6 uh, that I just showed you, is this the, the same car that you saw that day? Yes, it is. All right. And um, the one that you'd seen in the neighborhood previously? Yes. And then States Exhibit 9, um, do you recognize uh, the area depicted here in this, uh, in this photograph? Yes, I do. Okay. And is it a closer up uh, depiction of the uh, neighborhood that uh, you marked on the... Uh, States 8, the, the large blow-up over there? Yes. Okay. Now you can step right up to the picture there, please. 
And if you could, for the members of the jury, uh, orient them again to where is uh, your uncle uh, Tony's place? Right here. Okay. And right there where that red arrow has been placed, is that right around the driveway that you were in? Yes, right here. Okay. So there's a, there's black kind of a grid marks on this photograph showing the different property lines. Uh, where were you in relation to that black line? Directly on it. Could you please point to, uh, on the photograph there, where the red car was when you looked up and saw it uh, after you heard its engine? Stop me with this thing when you when I get there. See that moving at? Yes, it's right on the corner, like of Canner, right there. All right, so um, right at the corner, and the you said the law enforcement vehicle was right behind him. Yes. Did uh, I believe you said earlier, but the law enforcement vehicle had, had its overhead lights on. Yes. Did you hear any siren? No sirens. Near a drive there. What kind of road was that? A uh, dirt road. As they uh, traveled, you said they traveled past you? Yes. And is that all the way the length of that cutout that we have uh, zoomed in on? Yes. And down at the bottom is King Orange, is that right? Yes. Now, as, as they passed you, uh, the red car and the uh, sheriff's vehicle, uh, were they, you said when they came around the corner they were traveling pretty fast, were they fast the whole way down? Yes. I may have cut you off before when you were describing the person who was driving the red car. If you could do that again for the members of the jury. It was a black male wearing a white shirt with dreadlocks. When, when they got to the corner, if you could point to the corner that we're talking about, please. And there at that spot, where did, uh, where did you see, you said you saw the red car go through without stopping? Yes. And where did you see the sheriff's uh, vehicle stop? Right here. And you're, and you're indicating with your uh, finger there that it was parallel to King Orange? Yes. How long was uh, the deputy's or the sergeant's vehicle stop there? Five seconds, very briefly. And you said you saw him pull away quickly from there? Yes. <coughs> you can return to your seat, please. told us when you did hear the shots and you went inside, you, you heard at least two groups of shots. Yes. What did you, um, you said you saw your Uncle Jerry, hands in the air. Yes. Did you see anything else uh, over the fence uh, when you first came out and saw Jerry? No, I did not. When I looked out, all that's all I could see was my Uncle Jerry. Were you able to get in a position to see what was in the road? Yes. Uh, at some point. Yes. How how long after you saw Jerry were you able to see the the street behind the behind the house? Brief seconds later, I was walking out there. And what did you see uh, in the street? I seen a police car. Um, I seen another police car. There was a police officer that had walked up to the police car, the other police car, and then walked back. He was kind of just pacing back and forth. So you saw two police vehicles? Yes. And one police officer, one deputy? Yes. And you said the, the deputy that you saw was pacing back and forth? Yes. Uh, could you tell anything about his demeanor when you saw him? He looked very upset. No other questions. Mr. Glenn. Good morning.
let's go back to when we were in the van at the end of the driveway, okay? Okay. Excuse me, Now, if I understand the testimony correctly, you're cleaning the van. Yes. The van is parked at the edge of a driveway right by the road. Yes. And the first thing that catches your attention is the car engine. Yes. You get out of the van? I was never in the van. I was standing outside of the van, bent over. Okay. And you're facing toward the house where the van is? Yes. So you turn around? I turn to my right. I don't physically turn my body, but I turned my head to the right. So I would be facing Canner and North Mirror Drive. Okay. When you do that, you see the red car? Yes. And you see the police car behind it? Yes. With the lights on? Yes. The first time we saw the police car, the lights were already on? Yes. They're both driving at a high rate of speed. Yes. This is a dirt road. Yes. All right. Now, taking a look at the map that you originally used. Entertain me with that a minute. Down here at the corner of King Orange and Muir. Yes. Right here is where you were standing. Yes. Would you agree with me that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lots in between there? Yes. Okay. So, seven lots between where you're standing and the end of the road. Yes. Also, would you agree with me that this last lot at the end of Muir and King Orange, have you ever been there? I've never personally walked down to their house. Okay, so you've never seen that lot? I've never paid attention to it. Okay. From the picture, does that look like a parking lot there? From the picture, it does. Okay. Now, you're watching the car go down the street at a high rate of speed. Yes. You recognize the red car? Yes. You recognize the man driving the red car? No. You haven't seen that man before? I've never personally seen him up close. I mean, the neighbor. So. Let me ask the difference. You recognize the red car? Yes. All right, but you don't recognize the person who saw inside the car? I didn't get a full visual of his face, so no. Right. Now, you already told us that the red car gets to the end of that intersection. Yes. And goes around the corner. Yes. Okay. And then you told us the police car got to the end of that intersection. Yes. And stops. Taps his brake lights. He doesn't make a complete stop. Okay. So you're saying the police car never stopped at the end of the intersection? No, he was following the red car. I want to take you back to when you and I met up in Michigan. Remember that? Yes. We had a deposition. Yes. It was at a hotel. Yes. You came in. Yes. You told me about what happened, right? Yes. You were back on March 5th of this year. Yes. And before that deposition, I asked you to take an oath to tell the truth. Yes. Did you? Yes. Okay. I want you to take a look at, for the record, gentlemen, page 6. Line 9 to 15. I don't want you to read it out loud. I want you to read it to yourself. Thank you. 
now. On March 5th, you told me I'd previously seen him. I've never, like, walked up to him or anything. I've just seen him a couple houses down. Like, I can stand on my uncle's front patio. I could kind of see where he went. I mean, I wasn't really paying attention when I'm outside drinking coffee on the front porch. You know what I mean? Remember saying that? Yes, I do. Okay. So, you have seen me to Tisdale before. I, I couldn't say exactly that it was him. There's other people that live in that neighborhood. I've seen that red car. I've seen a black male before. Could I honestly at that point say, yes, that is the exact same guy? No, I couldn't because I've never walked up to him. He's never introduced himself to me. So if I've seen two black male that share similarities, it could have possibly not been the same person or it could have. I said, I have previously seen him. Yes, I did say that. Okay. Gentlemen, page 7, line 12 to 13. Miss Patton, please read this portion to yourself quietly. Thank you. On March 5th, 2015, I asked you this question. Okay, I want to make sure I understand you, what you're telling me. I think you're trying to tell me you did not see the red car make the complete turn around the corner. Your answer, I watched the red car complete the turn around the corner. Once he turned the corner, I could no longer see him. All I could see was the cop car stopped. Exactly. So, the cop car did stop at that corner, right? Okay, he didn't stop at the stop sign. I thought that's what you meant. He did not stop completely at the stop sign. Yes, he did stop at the corner. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. And when we're talking about the corner, we're talking about the corner of Muir and King Orange. Yes. Now, cop car stopped at the corner. You look away briefly, right? Yes. And then you look back down that direction again. Yes. And we notice the cop car gone. Thank you. Nothing further. Roger, how are any redirect? You and uh, Mr. Glenn seem to have some confusion there on the question of whether he was asking about the police car stop at the stop sign or stop at the corner. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And did you tell him in the deposition when when uh, it took place in Michigan? Uh, that the red car, quote, the red car rolled through the stop sign, the cop car rolled through the stop sign behind him. Uh, the only thing I could see uh, was the cop car, like, here's the stop sign, the cop car was right, like, like right next to, like he, he would have really went around the corner and then like stopped. I could see the whole visual of the cop car, but I could not see the red car. I could see the entire cop car. Exactly. And um, as far as the uh, question of the uh, seeing the defendant before, uh, was your explanation essentially that you couldn't, you didn't want to make an identification of someone because you weren't sure? Exactly. No additional redirect. Mr. Glenn, any other questions? No. Okay. Is she excused or y'all need her to stay or? Yeah, yeah she can be excused, John. Okay. All right, with the defense to excuse her? Thank you, ma'am, very much. You're free to go if you wish. You're welcome to stay, of course. Just watch your step. Okay. State caller, next witness, please. Michelle Hyde.
Ma'am, thank you for bearing with us. You're coming up through the gate. Watch your step over those cords there, please. You'll come right up here. She'll place you under oath, ma'am. Just watch your step there. Do you swear or affirm that evidence you're not to be able to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Just step right up there to your left. Watch stepping in, please. Good morning. Please introduce yourself to the members of the jury. Uh, good morning. My name is Michelle Ide. And, uh, ma'am, where do you reside? At this point, I'm in uh, Sherryville, Indiana. And how long have you lived in Indiana? I'm briefly visiting my sister oh. for, through the summer and uh, a little bit longer. Uh, in 2013, specifically on February 28, 2013, where were you living? 901 King Orange Drive here in Fort Pierce, Florida. And uh, how long did you live at that location? I would say about a year, year and a half almost. On, on uh, February 28, 2013, uh, were you at 901 King Orange in the morning? Yes, sir. What were you doing that morning? I had trouble with my lock, so I was uh, changing the lock at my front door. I was in between the front door and the outside of my sidewalk working on the door lock. All right. I've got, uh, leaning up there, uh, Bayou States Exhibit 8. Um, yes. With the court permission, I'll have you step down. Do you sure. record, can you point to on that, uh, can you point to on that photograph there where 901 King Orange is? Yes, I can, sir. Okay. Could you please step down and do so? Sure. All right. Um, and why don't we have you step off to the side so that everyone can see what you're pointing to. Yes. And first of all, we'll start with, you, you recognize the neighborhood here? I do, yes. Okay, and King Orange runs across the bottom portion of this photo, is that right? Yes. All right, and if I could have you um, point to the place that you lived there on King Orange. Okay. All right, now, what corner were you near? Uh, the adjoining street was uh, narrower. Okay. So take a second, look at the map, and see if you can find Naylor on the map. Okay. I'll give you a hint, the names are across the top. I want to find huh? Okay, this we just need Naylor. you to speak up because there's this no This one is Naylor. I do apologize, but the trees were distant. This is my apartment here. Okay. So um, you were pointing down to where Naylor meets King Orange. Yes, sir. And there's a... There was an apartment, what was it, a duplex building? It is a duplex, yes. Okay, and you lived in one of the apartments in this duplex? Yes, facing the building, it would have been the east apartment. Okay, and um, I've got here a yellow push pen yes. for you. Could you please put that uh, in the area that you were standing uh, when you saw some events happen that morning? Well, the tree's in the way, but there's a driveway here at the end, and that's where I was at after. I was at the front door, but I, I did walk down to the end of the drive. Perfect. That, so that uh, accurately represents uh, where you were living and where you were when you witnessed some events on February 28, 2013? Yes, sir. Okay. And if I could, uh, you can return to your seat. Okay, thank you. And we've moved this thing so many times, I think probably have to very anymore. Try that there. Okay. So... You were telling us you lived at 901 King Orange and you were working on your lock that day. Yes, sir. Did something uh, get your attention as you were in your doorway? Yes, I heard uh, revving noises of engines, really loud. Uh, wanted to know what was going on, so I left my front door and went down to the end of the drive to see what I what was happening. And uh, from your actually from your front door, could you see anything? And uh, initially, when you heard the noise? No, not at first. You had to move. Yes, sir. Okay, so you changed your possession, position to see what the noise was? Yes. And when you got to the drive, when you got to a point where you could see, what did you see? I saw a red uh, compact car racing um, down um, King Orange. And uh, did, you, did you see any other uh, vehicles at that point? Uh, a few moments later, yes, I did see a sheriff's vehicle. 
when you say racing down King Orange, could you tell how those two vehicles got on King Orange from where, when you saw them? No, they were already on King Orange at that uh, when I had noticed the uh, cars. And were they um, between? Uh, could you tell what street they were past when you saw them? Well, um, you mean past? Um, no, they were already just right in between Murr and Naylor, but they hadn't made it quite to Naylor yet. Okay. And um, the, the two cars, you said one was a red compact car? Yes, sir. And the other one was a sheriff's vehicle? Yes, it was. How close was the sheriff's car to the, to the red car when you saw them? Well, he wasn't right on hit behind him, but he was very close. What did you see next? Uh, the uh, red car continued to uh, head west on Naylor. I mean, west on King Orange, I apologize, and made a very sharp right-hand turn onto Naylor, heading north. And uh, <clears throat> the sheriff's vehicle, when you first saw it, did it have its lights on? Yes, sir. Do you know if it had sirens on? Uh, no, I don't believe so. N not that sheriff's vehicle. And you said he was, I think you said he was catching up to the red car? Yes, sir. Okay. What did you see uh, as you, you started to tell us the red car started to turn? Yes, and uh, Naylor is a dirt road coming from a paved road, and at the speed he was going, he lost a bit control of the vehicle, swerved a bit, almost hit the stop sign, but to continue to do make the right onto Naylor heading north. Did you see at any point, as, as it was turning the corner, before it turned the corner, the driver of the red car? Yes, for a brief moment. Okay, and could you tell if it was a man or a woman? It was definitely a male. And could you tell us anything else about the man's appearance? Um, he was a young uh, African-American with uh, dreadlocks okay. or braids of some sort. All right, and as he swerved, you said, um, kind of, you described like a fishtail kind of situation? Somewhat, he lost a little bit of control. And uh, got very close to the stop sign? Yes, sir. What happened next? Uh, the sheriff's office uh, vehicle turned behind him, caught up a little bit. So the, the turn allowed the deputy to uh, gain some ground on the red car? Yes, sir. What happened next? Uh, shortly after the turn, there was another sheriff uh, car behind. And the second sheriff's car, where was it coming from? It was coming down um, King Orange as well, and then made the same right-hand turn on Naylor heading north. What happened next? Um, about, um, I would say... Seven, six, seven houses down, I see the second vehicle on the right-hand side stop, and the sheriff did exit his um, vehicle. Let me stop you there. Before you saw the second deputy stop, um, I guess about halfway down the block, or, or even that far? No, I don't think it was halfway down. I'd say about five to seven houses in between that area, yes. Okay. Before you saw that, did you see what the, the red car and the first sheriff's vehicle did? The first sheriff's vehicle was at a stop, but I did not have a sight of the uh, red vehicle at that point. Had you kind of taken your eyes off them to look back at the second deputy coming down King Orange? I did for a moment, yes, sir. And in that, you lost track of the red car? I did, yes. Right. So when you, uh, what was the next thing that you heard or saw as you saw the uh, deputy coming to a stop, the second deputy coming to a stop in the road? Gunfire. What did you see the second deputy do? He exited his vehicle and and, go ahead. and, and uh, his back was to me, but he, had, he, he was shooting. He was returning fire, definitely. And you, for the record, you, you stood up and you held both your hands out in front of you uh, mm -hmm. like you were shooting a gun? Yes, sir. And that's the position that the deputy was in? Yes, his back was to me, though because they were heading north on Naylor, so. Could you see uh, at that point what was going on at the other end of Naylor, or was that deputy pretty well blocked in your view? N the, where the situation where his second car had stopped, it had blocked my view of uh, what he was actually shooting at.
during this entire um, episode, from the from the time that you first heard something to the time uh, that you saw the deputy shooting, um, did you ever hear any words? No, sir. You never heard anyone yelling? No, sir. Uh, never, uh, and even after that, did you ever hear anyone yelling after the shots were fired? No. When you realized that there was gunfire down Naylor, what did you do? Um, after I saw the sheriff exit his vehicle and start shooting, I got a bit nervous and ran back up the driveway for a moment to grab my phone to call my landlord. Uh, actually, he's a property manager. So then I stepped back into the door, which didn't close because I was working on it. So it was just for a moment. Your Honor, if I give you permission, I'm going to have the witness step down and work here with State's Exhibit 9. Yes, sir. You can step down right here, ma'am. Oh, yes. Thank you. And it's probably, from your perspective, right, it's best if you stand over there. Okay. Now we're, this is a very similar, uh, photograph to State's 8 that we have on the blow up here, but if, if uh, the area we've zoomed in on, does that depict um, King Orange and Naylor where uh, where you lived at the time? Yes, it does. Okay, and if you could um, point out to us which one of those, uh, well, just point to the area that you were uh, originally at. Originally at, I was at my front door. Okay. And there's a driveway where the trees actually blocked from the driveway, and at the end of the driveway there's a mailbox right up here. Okay. And you were standing near your mailbox? Yes. After I walked down, yes, sir. Okay. And um, if you could zoom it back out a little bit. Okay. Um, the point out for the folks where the, uh, where the red car was when you saw it. And take a second to arrange yourself because we just changed the, the zoom on the picture. Right here. And the sheriff's deputy was gaining ground on him uh, behind him? Yes, he was right about here. Right here. Yes, sir. So, right. here and here. I'm sorry to hear that. Why don't you repeat it, ma'am, please? Oh, I'm sorry. The uh, red vehicle was right here. Okay, so that's about halfway between Mira and Naylor? Yes, sir. And the sheriff's vehicle was where? Right here much closer to the corner of, uh, Nail of Mira. Yes, sir. Now, um, you said you saw them uh, make the turn onto, uh, on the Naylor Drive, is that right? That is correct. All right, and um, if, you, if you could, the stop sign that you'd be talking about that was, uh, that the uh, red car almost struck was where? Yes, it's traveling this way at a quick, a quick pace. And when he made the right onto Naylor, there's a stop sign facing this side. So he, it swerved a bit this way when he turned. He overturned, I believe. Now, where was the um, second deputy uh, when you turned your focus back down uh, King Orange? Where was the second deputy when, when, you, uh, when you saw him? Well, the red vehicle had turned. The, second, the first sheriff's um, car had already turned, and he was about here, the second officer. When you realized there was a second officer? Yes, sir. And uh, the, if you could for us, you said originally that you felt that the, you saw the first deputy's car stop down the street when you, when you looked back that way, following, your eyes following the second deputy, is that right? Yes. Okay. Could you point to, to us about how far down uh, Naylor you believe that the first deputy stopped? The first, the first deputy? Yes, ma'am, the first. I'd say about here. All right. Somewhat in that area, yes. All right, so right about where the, okay, where, is that fair where he placed the mark? In the middle of the street or is it one way or the other? It, it could be a bit further up, right back here, maybe possibly, but yes, that's, it's on the right, it was on the left-hand side, but if you were heading north. So describe for the record, we're talking about the area just above where it says Naylor. Yes, sir. Okay, and then the second deputy, where did he stop? He stopped a bit further back, 
And he was on the right side of it. Right about, I want to say here. Okay. The trees are a bit bushy. So right there where those two trees are in the road? Yes. Okay. Is that a fair place where you put the mark? Yes, sir. Okay, so there's a, for the record, there's two large, uh, look like probably oak trees, uh, about halfway or even a little bit so, uh, south of halfway up Naylor, and that's the area you're talking about? Yes, sir. Okay. And that's where the deputy was uh, when he fired shots, or did you uh, describe it, returning fire? Yes. Did you ever see that red car again in the, uh, that day? No. All right, you can return to your seat. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you. I'm going to leave the screen up just for a minute. Yes, sir. All right, I'm going to show you what's been previously marked as States Exhibit 22. Do you recognize the disc there? I do, yes. Okay, and uh, you re how do you recognize it? I have initialed it. Okay, and did you review this uh, disc uh, and the video contained on it? I have, yes, sir. All right, and uh, does that depict uh, a video, that, was that a video taken by a deputy uh, or a detective that questioned you around the time of the um, shooting? Yes, it is. And on, uh, it was not on the day that um, uh. No. Sergeant Morales was killed. No, it was not, sir. But it was around, it was a few days later. Yes. Okay. And does it depict the way that your front driveway and the, the orientation to uh, Naylor Drive was at the time? Yes. Okay. At this time, the state uh, seeks to admit state 22. Defense objection. Defense objection be admitted as state's 22 in evidence. Mr. Eisenhower, let me get you to hand the humble up there the clerk so we can make sure it gets marked. Yes, sir. And, Your Honor, when uh, Mr. Backwell is ready, we'll publish it. Okay. Once again, we'll go ahead and publish this for you. You'll... And, Your Honor, if I could have the witness step down. There's no audio. I'm going to ask her to describe some sure. things as we go through it. Watch your step. Yes, thank you. All right, ma'am. This is my front door facing it. Mm -hmm. Here I am, looking out. Mm -hmm. That's a fucking orange. Okay, go ahead and speak up because there's I'm no sorry, microphone this here. Is, uh, right. This is my view, and this is the road, King Orange. And right. uh, this here is approximately where I saw the red vehicle, right about in the center. And so as you're making your way down your driveway, you're able to see some, some of the what's going on? Well, yes. At the end of the drive, you can actually see Naylor right here, and here's the stop sign. Okay. And where were you standing uh, when, the, when the cars made the turn? At my mailbox right here. Okay. And you're pointing to the back end of uh, a four-door car that's parked on the street. Is that about where you were standing? Yes. Right about right there, yes. So right at the back bumper of where that car that's in this video is? Yes. And um, the road depicted running kind of from right to left in this uh, in this video running away from us is, uh, is Naylor Drive? Yes. Okay. And when you were able to get down there by the, the mailbox, you could see at least as far down the road as we can see from here, if not further? Yes, I could see. The video is not as clear as, you know, daylight, but I could see, yes. Sir. turning off of a road at the 
very right edge of the frame now. Um, what road is that? Uh, pronunciation, I'm not sure if it's right, but it's Murr, I believe. Good, and yourself? Good. Just want to clarify a few things with you. Is that okay? Yes. All right. Um, when when you were working on on your on your lock, you didn't see uh, where the red car and the the police car originally started from. No, I did not. So. Um, obviously when you're working on your lock, you don't have eyes in the back of your head. You're, you're looking down at your lock, right? I was in between my door. It was open, so I was halfway in and halfway out this way on the door, yes. So, okay, so and, and your door opens in or it opens out? In. In. And when you're working on the locks, you're almost actually slightly, you have the ability to actually look out towards the road and kind of look in towards your, your apartment at the same time. Yes. And um, you said that the first thing that actually made you even look up was you, you, you heard engine noises, engines revving, right? Yes, sir. And the first thing that you saw was, uh, was a red car coming, uh, coming down King Orange. Yes. And it wasn't until, I, I'm pretty sure I, I heard you when, uh, when you were talking to the prosecutor, it, it was a few moments later when you, when you first saw the, the police car coming. Yes. And by the time that they got to uh, turning north on Naylor, the, the police car or the sheriff's office car was, um, it wasn't directly touching the red car, but it was very close. He was behind him, yes, closer okay. than originally when I first saw him. He was very close when they actually got to the turn. Would you describe it as very close? Well, no, uh, not very close, but close. I, I... Okay. Um, now, just so I'm, I'm not being confusing. When they first, when the cars first started out, or when you first looked up and saw them, um, you said that you just noticed just the red car, and which obviously the sheriff's car would would be further behind because you didn't see it at that point, right? Yes. By the time uh, they got up to the turn, uh, you said that they had, they had closed the gap, which would mean that the sheriff's office car is driving faster than the red car, right? Well, the, yeah. red, the red car was going very quickly, and when okay. he made the right-hand turn onto Naylor, I said he had lost a little bit of control, a little bit of swerve. Yes. He continued to make the turn, and then shortly after that, the sheriff. They didn't turn at the same time. Okay. So it was by the by the time that the, the red car had completed the turn or was in the process of, of making its way through the turn, that's when the sheriff's office car was able to, to come up and, and get very close. To yes, it. sir. Now the This first sheriff's office car, you, you know, you know it's Sergeant Rouse's car. At this point, you do at least, right? Now, at this point in time, yes, sir. Okay. And just so it's clear, you you do know, um, or you before all this happened, you at least passively knew uh, Sergeant Rouse. That is work. that is correct. And where where did you work that you knew him? Uh, I worked at the Seven Eleven off Oleander, and um, I lived right there at King Orange, and I saw him on. A daily. He was his neighborhood. Right. And, and you wouldn't describe yourself as being friends with him, but you were friendly? Oh, no. I wasn't friends. I just I saw him in the neighborhood and at 7-Eleven uh, for coffee. And you knew him by name? Well, yes. 
Uh, so after after the red car and the sheriff's car made the turn and went north on Naylor, um, within a very short period of time, you would say the second sheriff's car came? That is correct. And it wasn't really clear, um, or at least it wasn't clear to me, when, uh, when you were talking before, had the second sheriff's car made the turn on to Naylor before or after you started hearing shots? No, he already had turned on to Naylor. So if I'm understanding you correctly, the, the second sheriff's car turned north on Naylor yes. first before you actually heard gunshots. The second sheriff turned after Sergeant Morales did and went down the street where I mentioned and pointed out to. And the question is, did I hear gunshots prior to seeing the sheriff exit his vehicle? No, I'm sorry. Oh, oh well, I, I guess that would still be a fair question. But um, the second car, the second sheriff's car that you saw make the turn, did you hear gunshots before or after that second sheriff's car went around the corner? After. After. So explain to me when, uh, where that second sheriff's car uh, was in relation to the turn when you actually heard gunshots. Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Sure. Uh, the second sheriff's car. Yes. Um, you're, you're telling me that he had already gone around the, the corner, he had already made the turn by the time you started hearing gunshots for the very first time, correct? Yes. Was the second sheriff's car still driving or had it stopped when, uh, when you started hearing gunshots? Well, he drove down the street and, and he exited his vehicle and he started returning fire. So I, I wouldn't say that he, I was, he was... Um, <clears throat> turning before I heard it, no. And um, so, returning fire obviously implies that there was that there was gunfire going off originally before he started shooting. Before. Yes, sir. So, the the first set of gunshots that you heard, um, that was, and, and I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. Forgive me if I'm not saying this properly, but. It's, it was, was it just before the second car had stopped and that cop got out and started returning fire? Yes. <clears throat> Do you recall either of the, the sheriff's cars having sirens on? I know there was definitely lights. I heard siren. I could not tell which one had the siren. As far as, um, as, far as the, the gunshots go, you seem to be able to hear me perfectly fine and I can hear you perfectly fine. You have no problems with your ears, correct? No, I do not, sir. How could you, could you tell us did the gunshots sound very distant and you could barely hear them, or was it loud? I could hear them just fine. It wasn't barely. It was. It was clear. It was very clear. You could. You could. You could absolutely hear the gunshot happening. Yes, sir. The gunshots were. Uh, louder, for, for example, they were louder than uh, the cars that when they originally came around the corner when they were racing their engines. Is that, is that fair to say? Well, gunfire is pretty loud, but yes, I mean... Right, I mean, because, you know, I, I wasn't there. Yes. You were. And I'm just trying to gauge or have you be able to explain the, the differences in, in sounds. And obviously you can tell the difference in between a, a gunshot and, and a car engine, but I was, I was trying to give the jury an impression of which was actually louder to you, the gunshots or when the engines were racing? The gunfire to me was. Okay, I don't 
have any other questions for you, Ms. Ida. Thank you. You're welcome, yes. Mr. Eisenhower, any redirect? No redirect. Thank you, sir. She may be released as far as we're concerned. Okay, with the defense to release her? No objection. Thank you, ma'am. You're free to go. You're welcome to stay if you wish, of course. Watch your step. Already, thank you. Would you all call your next witness, please? Jerry Polarski. Thank you, sir, for bearing with us. You can come on up through the gate here. Watch your step over those wires. Just come right up here, and this nice lady will place you under oath, sir. Do you swear or affirm that evidence you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Sir, step right up there to your left. Watch stepping in for me, please. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Please introduce yourself to the members of the jury. I'm Jerry Polarski. I'm a witness on this trial. You can have a seat, sir. No, no, have a seat, Mr. Polarski. Sorry, you can have a seat. Sorry about that. Um, go ahead and uh, spell your last name for us. My last name is spelled P-I-L-A-R-S-K-I. All right, sir. And where do you live? Michigan. How long have you lived in Michigan? Other than the military and defense, all my life. Um, the jury's already met a, a young lady named Casey. How are you related to her? She's my niece. And uh, where were you uh, in February, uh, on February 28, 2013? I was uh, in the backyard doing yard work alongside the road. Okay. I wasn't being that specific, but in what state were you in? Florida. And you were here in Fort Pierce? Absolutely. All right, great. And who else was here with you in Fort Pierce? Uh, Albert Kreinyuk. Okay. And how are you related to Albert? He's my first cousin. His uh, mother and my, my dad are twins. And Albert... Uh, was there with you when you say you're working in the backyard? Yes. Who else was staying at the house? Um, Casey, uh, Tony, my nephew. Uh, that was about it. Okay. And was your wife there? Yeah, she was in the house. <clears throat> On that... Um, the house we're talking about, was that on Mira Drive in, uh, in uh, Fort Pierce? Yes. And you said you were working in the backyard. Uh, what's in the, uh, what was the situation with the backyard there at, at the house? Tony just bought the house. And what we were doing was just yard cleanup. The house hasn't been cleaned up, you know, the yard for about a year or so. And so we were cutting grass, raking leaves, picking up twigs, paper, stuff like that. In the backyard in the house that's on here, our drive runs all the way to the street behind it? Yes. Okay. I'm going to ask you if you could just step down for a second, and we're going to have it take a look at State's aid. You can have it go ahead and step down, and um, I'm going to walk around to that other side. Make sure you don't block the view of all the jurors. Yes. And uh, I'm going to come back with a blue pen for you. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Do you recognize uh, the neighborhood here in this uh, aerial uh, yes, photograph? Yes, this is the tree of the court, and uh, this is the woods. This is the house we were in, and this is the backyard 
This is the area right here where I was. Okay. And if I could have you uh, go ahead and actually let me take that blue or green? I'm colorblind, so oh. just look green. Alright, we'll call. It's bluer than the other one, so we're calling it blue. So if you could please uh, put your uh, push that push pin in where it was that you were uh, working in the yard. Great. And you can step back just a little bit so all the jurors can see. That's fine. And um, when we're talking about we're talking about this house uh, here is your um, Tony's house. Tony's house. And this the, it run the property runs all the way back to that's right. It goes like so and goes right back to this street right here. Okay. Great. You can return to your seat, please. All right. All right. If you could for us, um, describe for the members of the jury, you already said what kind of yard work you were doing. What stage of that were you in? Had y'all completed it? Were you still working? What was going on when something happened? We just got done cutting the grass. We picked up the lawnmower and we put it in the back of the truck. And we were just walking around, picking up twigs, paper, just odds and ends, people's cigarette butts, styrofoam cups, you know, that what people throw out in the back alley, back, back streets. And uh, we were right at the end of, of the cleanup. And we are just standing there, really just kind of Last looks, ready to leave. Kind of visiting a little bit? Yeah, you got it. It was a morning, you know, it just, and it wasn't a big area to cut, so it was only like a half an hour, 15 minutes cutting, and that was it. And as you all were standing there in the lot, um, did something get your attention? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> What'd you see? Uh, a, a, a red car coming down that street very quickly. And? Uh, coming to a sudden stop. Stop you there. The red car, it got your attention because you heard it or because you saw it first? Papers, uh, you, you kind of heard it, you know, like it was like two houses away, and then you, you, I saw it just stop right along, just past the truck. And we'll talk about the truck in just a second. So the red car, uh, you see it and hear it coming? Yes. Uh, what was the, the street like back there on Naylor Drive? It was very loose gravel. They're doing maintenance in that area. They're upgrading the, the roads. Uh, and uh, I, I haven't been there this year or last year, but then it was very, very sandy. It was very, very easy to skid, let's say. If you slammed on the brakes, you could go a little ways. And you, I think you said that the red car came to a stop. Absolutely. All right. When you first saw the red car, did you see any other vehicles? Not at that, that second. When, when the red car stopped, then a police officer with his lights flashing on the grill, his lights were f flickering, but he was not making any, any noise. He didn't have a siren on. Right, so let me ask you about that. You said lights on the grill and also overhead lights? Uh, yeah. Okay, but no siren? No siren. All right, and so you were, starting to, you were using your hands to describe it. So describe for us what you saw the deputy doing when you saw the, when you saw the police car. Uh, he stopped, and he was trying to put the car in reverse. He was putting the car in reverse, and he was trying to open the door. He was trying to get out of the car. He was trying. He was trying. All right. Let me stop you there. Yeah. All right. So you were describing the car with the lights. What did... Um, you said he stopped. Where did he stop, and how did he stop? He slid past... The red car, and and he, he tried to back up the car and, and, and get, I think, he tried to back the car up. Well, without getting into what you think he was trying to do, what actually happened? He, uh, I'll get to it. You came to a stop. Yeah. The, the, the police car came to a stop. Mm -hmm. That's where you had us, that he was, and you were signaling with your hands as if maybe he was turned a little when he stopped. Yes. Yes, he would, because he came to a skid. Because the gravel was loose, he was going that fast, and he was trying to back up. And as he was doing that, that guy got out of the car, 
with a big pistol. Let me stop you there. I noticed you pointed to someone here in court. Do you see the person now that you saw that day? Yes. All right. Could you please uh, point to him again and describe something he's wearing? So you he's wearing about. a suit. Okay. There's a couple fellows. He's got a little tan. Okay. Which, uh... <clears throat> A little tie. Okay. There's one, two, three gentlemen sitting at the table. Which one are you talking about? Second from the end. Okay. Thank you. And you saw him get out of the car? Saw him come out of the car. All right. Now, if you could uh, tell the members of the jury uh, he got out of the driver's side of the red car? Yes. Okay. What did you see him do? Pulled the pistol out. Okay. Walked over to the car. All right. Now, describe. You've already stood up, so I was going to ask you to stand up and describe what you saw. He had, he had the pistol in which hand? Right hand. Okay. And how was he holding it when he came out of the car? Just like that. All right. Just pointing like it, that. and you're holding your arm out parallel yes. to the ground? Yes, just like that. All right. And what yeah. happened? He walks over to the driver's side of the car. The, which car? The, the, car? the police car. Yes, sir. And he shoots through the car. And so you saw the first shot, you believe, hit the car? Well, it went, yes, it hit the car, and it, it went into the driver. The driver's area. Okay. All right. You can sit back down again. Okay. Um, you're like me. You have to stand to talk, right? Sometimes. Okay. That's fine, Mr. Forrest. So the shot was, uh, the first shot was fired, and you believe it went through the back of the police car and into the passenger area of the car? I think it went into the police officer. And what was the police officer doing as that first shot was being fired? Nothing. Okay. He just stopped. What did he stop doing is what I'm asking. Everything. He just laid over to the side and stayed there. Okay. And what was he doing prior to that? You started to tell us, and I think I interrupted you before. Well, I, it's, it's, it's a safe way to pull somebody over if, you, if the cop is behind the car. I'm going to object to that. I'll sustain the objection. All, we're, all I'm asking, Mr. Clark, is what you actually saw. You saw him doing some motions with his hands? Yes. What did it... What, Help, help us understand what it, you saw. He was opening the door. Okay. He was, and he was putting it, the car in reverse, and he was opening the door at the same time. And then what did you see him trying to do? Nothing. It was, it was over that fast? Yes. Okay. So you saw him doing something within the car to look like with the gear shift and yes. the door? Yeah, seat belt, you know, the normal thing, get out of a car, get behind the guy. Did you see him uh, ever get out of the car? No. All right. What was um, the next thing you saw after the, you, you described the, the officer trying to get out of the car, you described the first shot uh, from the defendant, what was the next thing that you saw the defendant do? First shot and then what? He, he walked over to the open door and shot three times into the, the police officer's uh, chest area, okay. at least three times. Now let me ask you about that. You said walked over. Was he moving quickly or slowly? Oh, ev really quickly. Okay. Everything was quickly. And as he moved quickly towards the police car, what did he do? Had his gun out. Okay. And then you said he fired at least how many shots? At least three times into the, to the, to the police officer. And then he ran back to his car and took off. All right. Now, at his... As the first shot was fired, you said you saw the defendant getting out of the car, holding the, the gun. Describe the gun for the members of the jury. Big, big pistol. Good size. I, I don't know if it was a 45, maybe it's a little smaller, but a good size pistol. Good size. And it was dark color? Yes. Okay. Dark color pistol, and he had it in his right hand. What did you do after the first shot was fired? What did you do personally? I took off running. Now, you described a lot of events that happened after that, uh, but you said you're running. Why is it that you were able to see what was going on as you were running? Uh, we were standing, I was standing still when I saw the first shot. And as he was walking over to the driver's compartment with the open door, that's when I started running. Eye on the door. Oh, I did. I keep. I kept my eye on. I was in the military one time. You, if you don't know where the enemy is, you're you're no good. You gotta know. I, at least I I knew where he was standing. Right. What, right. I, what good does it do you to duck if you don't know where the person shooting is? Right. That's right. Okay. So you looked. Uh, do you remember if it was over your left shoulder or over your right shoulder? 
as you ran? Oh, he was there. Okay, so you're looking over your left shoulder, you're going towards where? The bush. Okay, there's, I, there was a bushy area there in the Yes. Line. Okay, so you ran to that. Once you got uh, back to that spot, you're, again, you're looking over your shoulder, once you got back to that spot, um, did you able, were you able to get behind the bush? Yeah. Okay. When you said you saw him shoot at least three times into Sergeant Morales. Yes. What did, uh, what did you do when he stopped shooting? Ducked. <laughs> because his, his attention, you were afraid, was going to turn to you? I don't know. I never asked him. I'm asking him not for, I'm asking for his state of mind, is what he was saying. I'll overly objection. Okay, I understand. I'll overly. So you were concerned, you're not saying his attention did turn to you, you were worried it might. Yes. Okay, so when you were concerned about that, that's when you ducked? Absolutely. All right. So you ducked down behind the bush? Yes. All right. What was the next thing that you perceived after you were behind the bush? He took off, and, and, and um, the police officer's buddy showed up with his car, and he stopped in the same spot where that red car was parked. And I stuck my hands up, because I didn't want that officer to think I had anything to do with it, and I, I ain't got no gun, you know. I'm just doing yard work here. And I put my hands up, so that's what that officer saw me, standing by that bush with my hands straight up in the air. Okay, I'm going to show you um, some photographs here. Um, some of them, let me check my list here, make sure that they're all already in evidence before I have you step down. All right. Judge, we're going to publish some photographs with the witness, if it's all right with the court to have you step down. Just make sure you identify which ones you're listening to. We're going to start first with um, State 6. If you can step down, Mr. Kowarski. And you can stand right here and we get the lights so that you can see a little bit better. Thank you, Deputy. All right. Here in States Exhibit 6, do you recognize what's depicted in that photograph? Do you recognize that? Yeah, that's the car he was driving. Okay. Um, and, uh, all right, so we'll move on to States Exhibit 13. Okay, looking at this area, can you, can you tell the members of the jury what's depicted here in States 13? Well, this is the backyard. Okay. All right, great. Now, um, so that they understand, you, you mentioned a couple of times that you had a, a pickup truck parked in the yard as well. There it is. And that's where you had the lawn equipment? Yes. All right. Now, if you were working in the yard, you drove the truck around to the backyard with the lawn equipment in the back? Yes, we, we had to. This this gate right here was locked. We couldn't drive through the yard out there, so we just drove around the block to there and parked. And I was right in this here area right here. All right. And who else was out there with you? Albert Kreinjohn. Okay. And was he in the same area? Yeah. We were just walking around, picking up paper, and we were just in that area right there, somewhere right. around there. Where was the where was the red car when you first saw it? Really, right there with the first cop car. Right where it was coming to a stop. Or the second cop car. Yeah, right there we stopped. He stopped in the same spot. Okay. And the deputy, uh, the the car that you saw come to a stop in front of him, is it still there in the same spot depicted in the photograph? Yeah. Okay. And could you point to it for us? Right there. Okay. With both car doors open at the, when the point this picture. Yeah, this is this is the officer who got shot in. This is the officer, the second officer pulled in. Okay. And the um, officer in the car that's that's on our right, slightly tilted, um, you never saw him get out of the car. No. Did you ever see anything that indicated to you that he had tried to get out of the car? Yeah, he, he's got to open the door. Okay, and then what about, did you ever see him get a, get a, uh, any part of his body out of the car? No, okay. never. There's no footprints. Well, all those shells are laying on the ground, there's no footprints down there. And, um, did you ever see the officer in that car shoot or do anything, do anything to be able to defend himself? No.
Now, when the, after the first shot was fired, you said you ran to uh, an area where uh, you were able to get behind a bush. That's right. Okay. Where it's was this that? one. It's right on the other side of that tree. There was a bush okay. there. Okay. This is one part of it, and there is the other part of it, but it's, this tree is kind of hiding it a little bit. All right. I want to show you. Um, I want to show you State's Exhibit 16, please. Does there you that go. depict the backyard? Yeah, there's the bush right there. That's where I was hiding. Okay, and if and if we could get Mr. Backo to zoom in on that bush area just a little bit, please. Yeah. Where were you? Albert shoved the, the lawn the, the lawnmower where he was cutting the grass. He pushed it in the bush there, and that's why I jumped right here. If you can notice, it's just a little opening. Now, as, as you were in that area, you said that, that that's where you saw him shoot into... Um, I was standing here when I saw the first shot, and then the other shots, I was in there. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you State's Exhibit 18. And is that a different view of the same set of bushes? Yes, that's the same set, and this is really where the red car was parked. That officer parked there, and I was right there. And um, now going on to States 20. You see the uh, car with the doors open. Is that the deputy's car who was shot? Yeah, and here's, here's the first shot right here. And so you pointed to a, a mark on the car, and That's now right. that it's been zoomed in, is that it there? That's it. And could you describe for us where um, the defendant was standing as he fired the shots into the car? Right in that area right there. So just outside the open door? Yeah, and that's where the shells dropped. Let me take you back to right when we were working in the yard, okay? Okay. I think you testified the first thing that got your attention was the revving or the noise of the engine. What? The first thing that got your attention was the revving or the noise of a car engine. Is that true? Uh... I can't say the roar of the car, but I can say that the cars are coming very quickly. And you censored that, and, and I could hear sirens from his buddy's car coming. Okay. Now, let's back up and digest okay. that a minute. Did you see the car before you heard them? Mm, no. Okay. Okay. I heard the car before I saw it. That's what I thought. Okay. Now, you mentioned to us that the road is gravel. Yes, very loose. Loose gravel. You're standing in the yard with Mr. Cranajack. Albert Cranajack is there yeah, with you. I, Albert Cranajack. Right. You hear the engine and you look down the street. No. You don't look down the street? No, we're picking up paper. And, 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 and the car just came right by our red truck and stumped. Okay. Fair enough. Now, you're picking up paper. Tell me, what is Albert doing? He was picking up paper, too. Okay. All right. 
you see the red car come to a stop, right? Now, before the red car comes to a stop, you notice the police car on the left side of the red car. Right. Okay. The red car then immediately slammed on the brakes. Well, he was already stopped. The red car was already stopped, and then the police car comes sliding by, and he was trying to stop. I'm with you, but you're going a little too fast. Let's back up. Before the red car comes to a stop, the police car is on the left side of the red car. No. 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 The red car stops. The police car is like a house down yet, and then he hits the brakes and comes to a slit. Okay. Now. come to a stop, right? Eventually, yeah. And the police car is angled in front of a red car. It's slid that's over that stop. red car. That's his stopping position. Yes. So it was actually a little bit in front of the red car in the stop Absolutely. position. Absolutely. Yes, yes, he was. He was trying to back up. Now, the red car backed up as well? No. Red car just stood right where it was staying. You didn't see the red car back up? Nope. Now, you testified the uh, door opened in the red car. The door of the red car opened. Yes, he got, the driver of the red car had to get out of the car, and he okay. opened up the door to get out. Okay. Now, at the time the door of the red car opened, yes. the door of the police car opened also. Pretty close. Yes, really close. Because the police car came to a stop a little bit after the red car, so they both opened the door pretty close, but the red car would be first. Yes. Okay. Now, you told us you saw a man get out of the red car. Yeah. And you told us that the gentleman didn't hear. Yes or no? You told us that the gentleman you saw get out of the red car. Yeah. Okay. Now, would you agree with me that the last time you saw this gentleman was on February 28th of 2013? Yes. Okay. And that was approximately two and a half years ago? Right. Okay. And you've never seen the gentleman before or after that day? No. Okay. Now, now just I'm curious, you're certain that this is the same gentleman you saw? Just tell me, just humor me, is there anything different about him today? His hair is a little different. Uh, he, he had a, a couple of those little uh, little, little pigtails, you know, how they tie these knots, how people tie knots in their hair. He had some of them like that there. He didn't have a suit on. He wasn't what he had on? What? You remember what he had on? White shirt. Anything else? T-shirt, well, shorts, camouflage, military clothes, you know. Anything else? No, that's about it. Okay. Now, you said the door of the red car opened. You watched the gentleman come around to the back of the police car. Yes. And you told us that he fired a shot that hit the panel of the back of the police car. Right. And then you told us he fired more shots. Right. He moved slightly aside, closer to the door, and then fired more shots. Now, just so we're clear, the motion of coming from a red car to the police car is very quick. Yes. Almost running. Yes. Once he stopped firing, he equally quick goes back to the red car. Right. Almost running. Almost. Get back in the red car. Yes. And takes off. Right. Okay. Now, prior to getting into the red car, did you see that gentleman stop running? 
Did I see that gentleman stop running? Did you see him stop running before he got in the red car? Well, he had to open the door. Well, no, I think his door was open. I don't know. Boss. So he ran from the side, driver's side of a police car. That's right. Straight back to the red car nonstop. And took off. Now, I want to ask you a question. when he was running back to his red car. Running back to the red car. You know, I ducked after that. And when he was coming back, I ducked. So you did not see everything? I saw the officer get shot. Okay. And I saw him coming back to his car and, and at that time, I lowered my head in the bush pile because I, my common sense said, this is a good time to duck. Okay. And, and then the cop, I mean, and then he took off, and, and his buddy, the police officer's buddy, come and stopped his car almost in the exact same spot. Then I, I, I had my hands up, and then I, uh, I saw the police car get out of the car. Okay. That's exactly the point I wanted to highlight. While you're duck behind that bush pile, yes. you're still watching the gentleman run back to the red car. Why, I, I am ducking, yes. You're still looking at him, right? A little bit, not not really. You know, the, the 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 shooting is over. I understand. And he's he's running for his life. Okay, fair enough. Now, while he's running for his life, you ought to have the gun in hand. Absolutely. And he had his arm thrust out as he's running back to the red car. He he might have. Okay, not sure. That's my uh, my personal opinion. He might have had his hand here or had his hand like that. Okay. What, what does that matter? Well, to you it doesn't. I'm asking you a question. Oh. <laughs> was his hand out when he was running back to the red car? That's my question, yes or not? I can't answer. Okay, so you don't know. I don't know. But you do know that you saw him run from the driver's side of the police car nonstop back to his red car. Right. Jump in the red car. And go away. Take off. Yes. <sighs> Mr. Pulaski, this whole thing happened very quickly, would you agree? Yes. And if I had to ask you to estimate would you agree with me that it took probably less than a minute? Oh, it would take more than a, I, I would say a minute and a half. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, it, it would maybe two minutes, you know, you just, you know, you just, cars well, got to stop, you got you to gotta shoot, you, you got to run back in your car, you got to take off, maybe a minute, minute and a half, two. You make a valid point, you're not sure of the amount of time. I wasn't watching my watch. Of course. But let me ask you this. You initially said a minute and a half was your first thought, right? Yeah. Thank you. Just need to have you redirect. No, sir. Is he released or do you all need him to stay? He may be released. Okay, with the defense to release him? Yes, sir. He can be released. Thank you, sir, very much. You're free to go if you wish. You're welcome to stay, of course, if you wish. Just watch stepping down for me. Thank you, sir. Your Honor. Everybody's okay restroom-wise over there? We're okay? Okay. Would you all call your next witness, please? State calls Albert Kronjak.
Good morning, sir. Thank you for bearing with you. You can come on up through the gate. Just watch stepping over the wires there, sir. If you'll come right up here, this nice lady will place you under oath, sir. Do you swear or affirm that evidence you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and not the truth? Yes, I do. Sir, step right up there to your left. Just watch stepping in for me. Good morning. Good morning. Please introduce yourself to the members of the jury. Okay, my name is Albert Kranjak. I'm a local resident of Florida. All right. And, uh, sir, if you could spell your last name for us. It's K-R-A-J-N-I-A-K. Pronounce it one more time for us. Kranjak. Thank you, sir. And, Mr. Kranjak, um, you said you're a resident of Florida. Uh, yes, I am. How long have you lived in Florida? I'd say about seven years. And uh, do you live here in our area or somewhere else? Uh, south of Jacksonville. And prior to moving to Florida, where did you live? Uh, Michigan. Most of the rest of your life in Michigan? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. On February 28th of 2013, uh, did you live, uh, as you said, just south of Jacksonville? Yes, I did. Visiting Fort Pierce that day. Yes, I was. And who were you visiting? Well, okay, it's family. You know, not tight family, but it's family. I, somebody bought a house. All right. And the, the fellow who bought the house is actually related, not to you by blood. No. All right. No. Uh, but who you were there visiting as well uh, is your cousin Jerry Polarski. Yes. Okay. Um, Have you stepped out for a moment and look at State's Exhibit A here, and I'll walk around with you. All right, sir. And so I'll have you, maybe I'll have you come around this side, but stay here close to this chair so that the uh, jurors can see. Um, could you, do you recognize the area depicted in this, in this uh, blow-up uh, satellite view of the uh, neighborhood? Yes. Okay. Do you see, uh, take a moment, get yourself oriented, and then tell the folks if you see uh, the house you were visiting there on the map. Okay. I'm sorry. Sir, okay, you've got to have to speak up a little bit. All right. Take a look at the house. I see you got everybody else. Okay. okay. Take a look. I'm looking at it. I know the street's this thing. Okay, so, so Mira is I'm street. saying there's the pool. Okay. All right. All right, and how many times have you visited this house? I've been there two weeks at a time, you know, doing stuff. But I'd say two or three times. Okay. Right. And so if this is the house that we have here in the middle of the photograph where, where you say the pool you can see, yeah. um, where is the, uh, is the prop, does the property go all the way to the street behind? It goes all the way to the street behind. It's like two lots here, one lot behind it. Okay. And the, the uh, lot behind, is that where you and uh, your cousin were working that day? Yeah. Okay. I've got a push pin here. And we'll match it up. Does the, the color seems to match your your name there. And if you could, uh, place that in the area where uh, y'all were working. Okay. Go ahead. Push it in. We're, very good. We're, with, we're straight. Great. You can return to your seat. Thank you. All right. Now, I was just getting into that with you when I had to stand up. You were working there helping out family. Yeah. All right. You, were, you said, I think, and if you hadn't, we'll have you say it now. You were working in the backyard doing some kind of clean-up lawn work. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. What point of the lawn work were you at when you when something caught your attention? All right, we were done with our lawn work. We finally got all the junk picked up, and the truck was parked in the by the edge of the road. I'm having a cigarette. I think Jerry Jerry's just standing there with me. We're taking a break. We're done. We finally got everything done. Trucks packed up. We're gonna leave. We're by the front of. We're by the front of the truck, by the 
side of the truck in the front. We're ready to go. I said, I'm going to have a cigarette first. Jerry, don't smoke, so I'm going to have a cigarette. And what, uh, what caught your attention while you were there smoking a cigarette? Well, I was, I'm there having a cigarette, and all of a sudden I hear all this gravel and dirt flying from a car and an engine running. And, you know, something was coming down the street, like bingo, like right now. And here comes this little reddish car by us. And then this, there's an officer chasing. Now you can hear this car coming too. Now he's trying to catch up to that one. You got two cars. <laughs> one hits the brakes. Which one hit the brakes? The red car hits the brakes. Then what happened? All right, he hits the brakes and he's sliding to a stop. Now this other officer, the officer's behind him because he was trying to, he was going to, he, he's on him now. But his car's a little heavier now. He, he hits his brakes. He's sliding. He slides a little bit past him and tips his car a little bit. So that's where those two cars stopped. When they, when they first, when you first saw the red car braking and starting to slide to a stop, what did you see the uh, police car do? He was, he was slamming on his brakes too. But did you see him try to avoid the red car? He had to. You know, um, I just. Watched this stuff. He hit his brakes. The officer now he he had to swerve, hit his brakes, follow him out, and then nudge it across him just a little bit. Not a lot. Just, just kind of the nose. If he went straight, he would have hit his fender a little bit. If if the red car had gone straight, it would have hit the deputy's fender at that point. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, not much, but he would have hit it. So yeah. he didn't lock him out like this. You know, he he barely. So you're, you're signaling your hands, so we want to make sure oh, we describe it for the, yeah. the court reporter. You said they were behind each other. And yes. The, the, I mean, the deputy was behind the red car. When the red car stopped, the deputy worked out to the left around him. Yes. And slid to a stop, turning his nose back to the right. Yeah. Okay. Not a lot, but, you know, not a lot. Like, the car was this way in the road. It's just barely touching. You know, Understood. you still head down the road. What happened next? Uh... I couldn't believe it. The guy in the red car steps on the gas and backs up to where our truck was, where we were at. And when he hit the brakes, he he jammed in reverse, stepped on the stepped on the gas, brought the car back, slammed on his brakes. Now his when he slams on his brakes, he's like his fender, his nose of his car is our at our front tire of the truck. We're sitting here. Now he passes our front end of the truck and he slides to a stop. So he backed up and all we said, I said, he's getting a ticket. <laughs> right. Yeah. He was, he was about to get a ticket. Yeah. And what happened next? He jumped out of his car. When he jumped out of his car, he had a gun in his hand. When he jumped out of that car, he took a shot as fast as he could at the officer's car. I don't know if he hit it or where the bullet went, but he's running full speed. The officer, I'm looking at the officer, and he's like, yeah, because I really, this guy stopped. I'm looking at the officer's car. What's he doing? He's not getting out of the car right away. You know, what? he's, he's going to get out of the car, wherever he was doing. But it was so quick. This is seconds now. You're not talking, you're not, you know, people ask you, ask you, how fast was this? You know, it was like clockwork. It was so fast. He jumps out. Of, somebody jumps out of a car, takes a shot as he's running. He takes a shot at the guy's car, the officer's car. I don't know if he hit it. I don't even know if he hit the car because this is like so fast. And it's like we're plain view. What happened? Uh, what did you see the officer doing at that point? <laughs> he was he was bouncing around in that car, just trying to do. You know, he was moving in that car. The door goes kick he didn't open the hand he did not open the car door with his hand he was already when he stood like that he was whatever he was doing he kicked that door open he made it be opened it but he kicked the door open his hand didn't go pushing on it because he was back this way and he took the shot at the car i don't know if he hit him i don't know if he hit the car because he ran takes the first shot he's running Door gets kicked open. He takes an angle cut a little bit. He goes like this. He shoots one at the officer. He leans forward. He hesitates. Then he goes back in at him. 
And I'm telling you, he walked his gun shooting all the way into the door of the car with it wide open at him. Like, like he walked it in. He just didn't go boom, boom, and just stand there and throw shots at him. He was running into that car, that little sp spot, like maybe three steps, but he was like, the last shot was inside the car. The gun was inside the car. It wasn't just outside the car. It had to be inside the car, even the angle I was at. It was in the car. And that's what I seen. How and then he ran back. Or maybe even more. It was so fast and it was like. You said you saw the officer kick open the door. Did you ever see him get out of the car? He never made it out of the car. He never made it out of the car. He got the door open. And I seen what he looked like. And he was like, yeah. Well, I was going to ask you about that. First, um, could you describe what the fellow looked like that was doing the shooting? Uh, okay. He had dreadlocks. He had a t-shirt like on. Shorts. Uh, I, remember, I can remember him. And that, that's what I've seen. is just... Yeah, I, yeah. Black guy or white guy? Black guy. Now, you said you were standing by your truck when this started. Yes. Right up next to it, could you have touched your truck? Oh, yeah. We were, you yeah, know, we were right by then. How the close was, you said the red car stopped, and its final stop, uh, right next to your truck. How close was it to your truck? I'd say the front tire of the truck was his front bumper, right about that area. How about the distance between them? It couldn't have been two feet, three feet, most, maybe so, less. So between you and the, the shooter, when he first stepped out of his car, it's the width of your truck, two or three feet, and the width of his car? As the, obviously, he covered some ground to get to the deputy's car. Yeah. What did you do as as you saw this happen? Well, you know what? We should have ran right away. We didn't. What I did was both of us stood there and watched this come down in the shooting. Now he's running back to his car after he did all this. Now he's running back to his car, gun in hand, and it's like he made a, a very little eye contact, with, but there was a hesitation. Two. Me, I could see it. Me and Jerry standing there. So I just said... You felt like he looked at you. Oh, no, he looked at both of us. That's what I felt like. And, and when, it was like, when you felt that way, what did you do? I told Jerry, run. And, and did you run? I ran that way. He ran this way. Okay. When you all... Uh, before you ran, you saw him turn back and head towards his car. How was he holding the gun as he went back towards his car? Like locked. Locked in position like this. After he shot him, after he shot him... But when he was running back to his car, it was locked, like pointing down the street. Not, he wasn't putting it back down in the ground or anything and running. It was like this. Straight out. You're straight out. with your arm for the record. Yeah. Your arm like parallel to the ground, straight out, holding the gun out in front of him. Yeah. Okay, and you said there, I believe you said, I may have cut you off, that he was pointing it down the street. Yes. As he did that, as he pointed the gun down the street, and was he walking, was he running, how was he moving? He was running. Okay, back towards his car. Yeah, he was on a move, yeah. Okay, which of course is back in your direction as well. Yeah. Now, you said pointing down the street. Indicate down the street he's pointing. Yeah, he was like pointing at past his car. He wasn't nowhere near us, but it was scary enough. But you never felt it was pointed at you? No. What's the next thing that happened uh, after, well, let me ask you this way. You said you ran and you pointed a direction. Which direction did you run? I ran, okay. Jerry ran towards the bushes and there was a cyclone fence, a small one, you know, not that high. You had to get over it. I had to get over that to go to another fence, the wooden fence, and a trail going back there so I can get to the gate that we left open. You know, that was my 
plan. <laughs> that was your plan of escape? Yeah. And how far did you get? I got to that fence, and there was, I heard a little shot, and then I, I heard another shot, and I says, well, I'm going over the fence, I'm going to jump, and I look, I see an officer there taking a shot. I didn't even hear the cars pull up. I didn't, I didn't see the other car pull up, but I heard, the, I heard a shot, and it's like I'm jumping the fence, and I'm looking at him, I'm saying to myself, what I'm saying to myself, you know, I'm scared anyways, and I look, oh, God, there's somebody is shooting at him, that it's not shooting at us. <laughs> right. So I froze it in right there because I knew I didn't have to jump the fence. <laughs> what did, the, uh, what did the, get, the, the shooter, the man in the red car, what did he do when you, or what was he doing when you saw the officer, uh, the second officer shooting at him? I seen his car going down the street. It was already moved away from the truck and going down the street. I never even heard it take off. I was too busy. I didn't know what, I didn't even know there was an officer there until I tried to jump the fence and I heard the gun going off. So. Now you said you saw the, the, the red car driving away. What did it, where did he go when he drove away? Okay, when he went down the street, he went all the way to the end of the street and he took a right. Like towards it, there's a trailer park down the road where you make a turn. So, so you turned right after you saw him drive away. Yeah. Uh, and what did you do as the, uh, what did you do? You just stayed there by the fence? No, I, I ran towards the truck, the nose of the truck, because the officer was there. He was in the daze, too. You know, I'm not picking on the officer. He did what he had to do. He took a shot. I mean, he, I don't know how many shots he took, <laughs> or the other guys took shots. I didn't, I only seen him shoot down the street, but there was other shots in between, but I was running. So I ran, I was waving at the officer that did the shooting, raising my, my hand so to let him know that I was there, and I was yelling at him, I'm, gonna, I'm going to the car. I, I ran to the officer's car, and I looked, in, I looked inside. And this bothers me. I look inside the car, and there's fibers. His chest is got it. That's that's the biggest damage I've seen, you know. But there was no. It was, his eyes were. He was just laying back over his computer, just laying in there, one foot wedged into the where your his feet. I looked at everything. And he was, there was no. He was done. I mean, there was no, there was no movement. There was no lung movement. There was nothing. There was just tissues and fiber and blood and pieces of coming out of the center of his vest that he had. On. Because I don't know. I'm no expert. Those vests are supposed to work, but I don't think they work that close. You know, is that what? You, I'm looking at this. He's got a foot wedged in the door, but not outside. He's got the other one hanging over the seat out there. He kicked the door open to get out. He never got out of that car. And I don't know if he pulled his gun because I didn't, I wasn't looking at that. I was looking if I could help him. And it was like, and I just backed up and I told the officer he was just, he was still had his gun. He was talking, whatever, you know, he was, it happened so quick. And I just told the officer, he's gone. There's nothing you can do for him. If, if there was something I could have done, I, would, I looked and he says, I was just amazed. I was shocked. I'll sustain the objection. I'm going to show you some photographs, okay? And we'll have you explain what you saw to the members of the jury. Yeah. Your Honor, if that's all right, we'll publish the... Uh... Yes, sir. And you can step down, sir. All right. <laughs> showing you State's Exhibit 6. Do you recognize uh, that vehicle? 
It looks like his car. It didn't look like that when I seen it. You know, right. It wasn't smashed. Uh, all right, we're going to show you next. Should be State's Exhibit 13. Do you recognize the area depicted in this aerial photograph? Yeah. All right. If you could go ahead and step up there to the, and you know, be mindful that the jurors you need to see what you're pointing at, and could you point to the red truck that you've been describing your truck, or the truck y'all use? This is the truck we had. All right, and um, you said you were standing right next to the truck? Yeah, I was standing like by the windshield, but right there. Uh, all right, and Jerry was in the yard there near you? He was right alongside of me, like, we were right together. Like, but we were right next to the truck. We weren't like 10 feet away from the truck. We were by the, no, we were close to the truck. When you're out here in the middle, there's no microphone, so speak up just a no. little bit more. That's fine. If everyone does it. If you can yeah, back we up. were there, but we weren't far away from the truck. I got to reach my hand and just, you know, put my Coke on there or whatever. Get a drink. Just sit in the It wasn't that we were far away from it. All right. Where was the red car when you first saw it? When I first saw the red car, it was like even with the window, like right here. You know, it was like, we heard the noise. I heard noise, and all of a sudden, here comes this red car wishing by. And did it, you said it slid to a stop? Yeah, it slid to a stop. This is, hit, this is, a, he slid, this white car, if you get rid of that white car, here's the officer's car. Right? Yeah, okay, that's the officer's car. He slid over here. The one with the doors open is the officer who slid, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. That's good. Now, um, where did the red car come to a stop? You know what? The red car, when he slid, was pretty close to where this white car is. You know, this, not this one, but this one. Right, the one on our left, the yes. one we're looking at the picture. Right. And, and then you said he went in reverse. He went in reverse, and he ended up almost, I'd say the tip of his red car ended up with that arrow. The front end of his car backed up to that arrow. So from your Maybe vantage... a little bit more up, but it was like center, center of the tire, or a little bit back, his front end was there. We could see his whole windshield. I could see where I was standing, and this is closer to the vehicle towards the windshield. I could see the front end of his windshield and his door. You know, if I looked across, I could see the driver. Now, when he, you said he was standing right next to his car when he fired the first shot, he had just gotten out of it? He just got out of his car and the first shot went to the, to the officer's car. Not saying he shot the car, I don't know. But that was part, there was a shot fired. And that's when you said you saw the officer kick open his door and try to get out? He was already into a step. Or he was already into a step to the car. He was already on his run to the car to the shot. Door got kicked open. Okay. And the, uh, the shooter then, you said, uh, approached the um, approached the car, uh, the deputy's car, very fast. Yes, he did. But when the door got open, he, he was running to the car with his hand, with the, with the gun out. I'm going to show you states 20. And looking at the, the car there with the door open, um, is that the position the car was in when you saw the shooting? Yes. Um, where you said that he advanced with each shot, uh, the first shot that he fired, uh, I'm not talking about the shot that from his when he was at the red car, but the first shot when he was close to the officer's car, where was he standing when he took his first shot? Well, he already took that shot. He's running this way. Door gets kicked open. He takes his shot. Now, he's, he's running this way. The door gets open, so he takes a shot. Then, it, you know, the door's all the way open. He takes a shot, then he hesitated, and then he started taking more shots of all the way. And you're indicating you're moving your hand closer to the door with each shot. Yeah. And you felt like the firearm kind of broke the plane of the car and was actually inside the car when he took his last shot? Yes.
Now, if I could, uh, Mr. Beck, I'll have you go back to number uh, 13. Um, you said as he, um, after he shot, you saw him with his arm pointed down the street running back towards his car. Is that right? Yes. Okay. If you could just point to us the area that we're talking about he was running in when you saw him pointing down the street. Well, when he left the off, off when, he, when he took his last shot, now he's steadily running back. And he wasn't running like this here. The gun was always locked pointing down the street. You know, right. like he was running like this. And did it, did Why the, he didn't drop it down running, I didn't. Did the firearm seem to be steady as he was doing that, or was it waving around? Oh, no, it was steady. No. And could you point to a place on the on the picture where you feel like his it was aimed? Because you said it wasn't pointed it was at your truck. It down the street. You know, it wasn't, it was like, he's parked over here, he's running to his car where it was parked. He's going to his door, but it was his hand was locked. It's like you, you know, usually you're running. I'm going to control to be running. I'm going to be moving, but this, his hand was out. Yeah, and it didn't go down. Right. Thank you, sir. You can return to your seat. Do you want to start now or do you want to wait till after lunchtime? Do you want to wait till after lunchtime or do you want to start now? Uh, not up to you, sir. Okay, I'll give you 10 minutes and we'll stop at noon. Okay. It's Canada. Kind of, yeah. How are you? All right. Um, go back over a couple of things you told us about, okay? Okay. about when you're standing by the red truck and yeah. taking your break, mm -hmm. okay? And I think you told us the first thing you noticed was the motor, the sound of gravel, am I correct? Right. Now, I want to bring this out because I'm not sure anybody else has talked about it. When these cars are driving down the road and the gravel and uh, sand and dust goes flying everywhere, it goes up in the air, right? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. And that happened on this day? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. Okay. I'm not trying to be mean, but you have to say yes or no for oh, the baby okay. to type in what you're saying, okay? I know what you yeah. mean when you, um, but just, if you'll just say yes or no. Okay. So, the red car goes by you, the police car goes by you. There's dust in the air from the road. You would agree? Yeah, there's, there's some dust. But I'm not, you're, you know, I'll say there's dust. Now, when the red car slammed on its brakes, the amount of dust increased, would you agree? Yeah. And then when the police car slammed on its brakes, the amount of dust increased as well? Yeah. Okay. Now, you told us that the red car, after coming to a stop, put it in reverse and backed up to mm -hmm. approximately where your truck is. Yes. All right. The police car stayed in the same spot. Yeah, he it never moved. Now, I want to be clear. When the police car went around the red car, it would have hit the red car had it not gone around the red car. Would you agree? Oh, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Now, the red car come to a shop. You noticed the man get out of the red car? Mm hmm Yes? Yes. You had the gun in his hand? That's after he, yeah, when he came back, he was not the first stop, but when he backed up, yes. That's okay. when he got out. All right. That's what I'm talking about, when yeah. he opened the door and get out of the red car. Yeah. Had the gun in his hand. Right. He runned over to the police car. 
Well, he's running to the car. Yeah. To the running toward the police yes. car. You already told us he fired, and then he kept firing into the police car. Yeah. All right. Now, when he stopped firing, he turned around with his arm outstretched and ran back in the direction of a red car. Yes. Now, you never saw him point and fire at anyone else after he fired into that first police car. No. He get back to the red car. He runs the entire time. Yes. He gets in the red car and drives off. Yes. Now, just so we're clear, a second police car comes down the street. Yes. Yeah, the second car, the next one coming. You saw that officer fire at the red car as it's driving away. Yes. You remember how many times that officer fired at the red car? There were shots. I don't know how many times he fired at the red car, but I know I seen him shoot, shoot one shot. You know, I didn't. There were shots. I didn't. I don't know where they were coming from or what. When I went to jump the fence, that's when I noticed the shot being fired, and it was from the officer. Okay. Now, these shots you heard, you're talking about after the guy from the red car had done shooting. Yes. Thank you. Nothing further. Judge, I have one question I want you to ask. Yes, sir. Did you actually see the shooter get back in his red car, or was that when you were looking at the fence and trying to figure out your next move? I, you know what, he was almost, he was, when he looked at me, at, he was at his next step he was in the car. When, I never seen him jump in his car because I had my eyes that way and running. You know, okay, it's like, at that point. yes, yes. I, so the last time you saw him was outside the car and then you saw the car drive, you saw the car driving away when you looked back in that direction? Yes. No further regret. Okay. Just. We, we, do, we cost them yes, that. I want to make sure everybody clear on this. How close was he to the red car when you last saw him before he drove off? Right next to it? Oh, he was, he was to the windshield. When I was running, he was at his windshield to his car. Okay, so can you estimate how close he was to the red car the last time you saw him before he drove off? Last time I saw him, he was like, like, here's his car. If that was me, here's your car. <laughs> he's running. He's he's at the edge of the windshield. He's he's going to be getting in his car, and I left. So I never seen him get in his car, but he was so close to it. It was one more step he was in. Could he have reached out and touched the car? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Nothing further. Is there anything else? No, he may be released. Okay, with the defense to release him? No, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir, very much. You're free to go. Uh, you're welcome to stay if you wish, but thank you. Watch your step stepping down for me. Thank you all very much for your attention. We'll go ahead and take a lunch break. Mike, have you all come back to the jury assembly room at 1.15 p.m.? Uh, please do not discuss this case with anyone or allow anyone to discuss in your presence or fix any opinions as to the merits of the case. Please don't read or listen to any media counsel after your deliberations are finished. Thank you all very much for your attention. You can step down. You can leave your notepads there. They'll be there for you when you come back. attention Mr. Bowden said he was cold or alternate juror he's cold is that what that he's freezing his head's freezing because of that vent I guess is blowing right on him so I'll see if maintenance can tape it up oh, okay well we I hate to make it warm in here well or we can swap seats yeah. with somebody they want to volunteer I'll see if they can tape it okay it's up to you anyway that's what he complained that he was cold so okay if you want to take care of it all right I'll come back at 1 15 p.m please